police helicopters circled in the night sky above the city. The policeman contacted the other by radio, calling him by the codename Sokol, and demanded to know the location of the target. Replied that the target was located in Hospital 13. The hospital was surrounded by police cars. The police demanded that they lay down their weapons and immediately release the hostages. A man in a hat, putting a gun to the head of a guy with dark hair, shouted at no one to move. He said that if anyone took even a step, he would be killed immediately. The policeman asked the sniper what the probability was that he could shoot the criminal without injuring the hostage. The sniper, looking through the optical sight, answered, 10%. The guy with dark hair smiled and said that it was too unprofessional and such emotionality would only reduce his concentration, and then the sniper would have a great chance to shoot him in the head. The spotlight of a police helicopter was shining on them. The man shouted at him to close his mouth. The sniper, looking through his scope, discovered that the man was hiding behind the hostage. The policeman, cursing, said that he understood everything. He ordered the move to plan B and ordered the assault team to prepare. The hostage, smiling broadly, told the man that if he were him, he would quickly hide in some remote place and lock all the windows and doors, being careful of the assault group. The man told him to shut up and asked which one of them was the kidnapper. He said he didn't need his advice. The door slammed shut. The windows were covered with curtains. The policeman asked what he was doing. He said that he seemed to have guessed their plan. He asked the head what they should do. Another policeman ordered not to do anything unnecessary, and from above they said that this man had some very important thing in his hands, so they should retreat. Looking out the window, the kidnapper angrily asked what kind of pack of dogs this was. Placing his hand on his chest, he asked if they really knew what it was in his hands. The hostage said with an imposing grin that it looked like he was in big trouble. He said they cornered him and he even wanted to use him as a hostage to escape. The man, pointing a gun at him, asked if he allowed him to speak. He asked if he believed he could shoot him. Pointing his thumb back, the guy asked if he hadn't seen what this place was. The man asked in confusion what was wrong with this place. The sign said, hospice. The guy, touching his forehead with his index finger, said that they live here for a maximum of two months. Gritting his teeth, the man swore. The guy, raising his palm up, asked what he should be afraid of, a man who would soon die. He asked if he could ask him something. The man looked away and told him to leave him alone. The guy grinned and said that he seemed to have just been looking at himself very closely. He asked if he hid anything valuable there. The man turned around in fear. The guy suddenly grabbed the pillow. He threw a pillow at the man's face. Jumping up from his seat, he sharply grabbed him by the wrist of the hand with which he was holding the pistol. The guy hit him in the face with his fist. He grabbed his hand with both hands. The man screamed in fear. The guy dropped the man to the floor in one motion. The man, lying on the floor, asked if he had deceived him. The main character said that he really didn't have long to live, but for the wrong reason. Squatting next to him, he said that he had wasted 7 minutes and 28 seconds today just because he suddenly burst in here. Picking up the rectangular object, he asked if this was what he was hiding, and whether it was because of this thing that those people surrounded him. The man demanded that the item be returned to him. The main character opened the lid of the box with a grin. Pixels surrounded him and he exclaimed slightly in disbelief. Streams of golden energy filled the room. The man desperately extended his hand. The dialogue box says, Time Travel Entry. A golden symbol appeared on the protagonist's hand and he asked what that sound was. The man asked if he understood what he had done. He said it was an account from another world, but it was the end of him. By kicking him in the face, the main character said that he was already doomed to die. He knelt down, picking up the gun from the floor, putting the muzzle of a gun to the man's forehead. He said that if he didn't tell him about this otherworldly account, he would die right now. The man said in fear that he would tell him. 2050 A mystical meteor shower has greatly changed their world. The dragon fiercely opened its mouth, in which flames were visible. He was surrounded by other beast-like monsters. After it, some people were able to move to another world and undergo various tests there, but they could return to reality only after successfully completing them. As a reward, one could receive jewelry from that world, cures for all diseases, powerful weapons, and even special things that a person could not imagine. The appearance of another world greatly shook the order of the native universe. People began to attack travelers through the worlds, wanting to know the secret of crossing spaces. After completing a series of games and battles, people found out that the key to movement lies in a special thing called another world account. Those who receive an otherworldly account receive a special mark on their body. Teleportation to another world occurs within a quarter of an hour. The man said that these people began to be called travelers. The mark on the protagonist's hand glowed slightly. There are 59 seconds left on the timer. 
There was a loud knock at the door. The police knocked down the door and burst in, ordering them not to move and to release the hostage. Seeing something, the police froze in amazement. The kidnapper was tied to a chair with rope. There was a pistol on the floor in front of him. The police asked what it was. The dialog box said, Traveler Lu Jia, the test will start in one minute, please prepare. There was a countdown on the phone screen that showed 59 seconds. Lu Jia said that from what he had just learned during the interrogation, no matter how much time had passed since traveling to the other world, in reality it was only an instant. Standing on the roof, he said that when crossing, you can't take any things except the clothes you're wearing, so you won't be able to take a weapon. The main character said that the police took that guy, which means they and the elders will not touch him. Looking at his palm, he said that according to that guy, the test in the other world is relatively safe, and it is almost like a game. The dialogue box says, Traveler Lu Jia, please be careful. In 10 seconds you will enter the test space. Please be prepared. Lu Jia, smiling, said that he found the supernatural world a few months before the end of his life, and it would be stupid not to visit there. He frowned resolutely. The system reported that the traveler's connection was starting, scanning a participant to create a character. Login area, public area. There were many people in the square surrounded by stone columns. A person began to form from the pixels. The dialog box says, Verified traveler, Lu Jia. The main character completely appeared in space. The dialog box says, After character creation is completed, the participant can view the character card at any time using the power of thought. Lu Jia, looking around, asked if this was another world. He said, view the character card. A dialogue box appeared in front of him. The character map is a reflection of the traveler's current state. All changes during the test will be recorded in the map. This table is your current characteristics. Lu Jia, level 1, person. Attack power, very weak. Defense, low. Spiritual resistance, extremely weak. Speed, low. Perception, low. Strength, 2. Agility, 2. Body, 3. Perception, 2. Spirit, 3. All characteristics are divided into 5 types. Strength determines the level of your attack. Speed depends on agility. The body determines the HP limit and defense capacity. Perception is responsible for the volume of perception. Spirit determines spiritual resistance and SP. The backpack is empty, there are no skills, no mechanisms. Current points, zero. Intensity rating, paper. This is your table of skills and items. Current inventory space, 30 pieces. You can only get points by passing the test. You can exchange them in the public area or sell them to other participants. Intensity rating is the system's determination of your combat effectiveness. The main character, rubbing his chin, said that the paper level sounds very weak. He heard someone say that this is a new green level product, a poisonous sword. The guy in dark glasses asked how this was possible. The guy in the armor asked if that wasn't the thing that exploded in the parallel test. Someone said that the penalty for dying in the parallel level challenge is too high. He asked who would decide to sell green equipment. The hooded guy said that he is an expert, and this is indeed the poisonous sword from the parallel level trial. In front of him lay a poisonous sword, attack, normal, effect, poisoning. During an attack, the chance of applying a poisonous effect is added. He said that everyone knows that there are four levels of testing, paper, parallel, strong and cruel. And although no one has ever passed the cruel level, many strong warriors have passed the parallel and strong levels. He said that the weapons from there are blue and green level and, naturally, they are very expensive. The guy said with a smile that this poisonous sword was the stolen goods of a player ranked in the top 56 of the hate table. He said that they understand what smuggling is, so he can only sell it secretly, and now for only 500 points. The players began to name their price, starting at 500 and going up to 800. The guy grinned and thought that these fools believed him, and this time he would make good money. Hearing the sound, everyone froze. The guy in the armor said it was a public area alarm. The dialogue box says, attention. An extremely dangerous individual has been detected attempting to enter the area. People looked around puzzled. The system reported that law enforcement had already been dispatched. Knights with huge swords approached the crowd. The dialog box says, safe zone court strength, strong. The optical interface is fixed on the main character. The dialog box says, target detected. Criminal number one. Rating in the hate table, one. The main character exclaimed that guy was looking at him. Hastily collecting his things, the guy with blonde hair hurriedly ran away. The knight pushed off the ground, leaving cracks in it. He charged, swinging his sword. The guy swore and said that he lied about the judge. Noticing Lu Jia starting to run away next to him, he asked if he was also a criminal. 
The main character asked what nonsense he was talking about. He told him to tell him where they should run to hide from them. The dialogue boxes say, all because you are on the list of criminals. In addition, you are the first among the wanted people, current index, six stars. Attention, you have six stars. This means that every effort will be made to catch you. Punishment, destruction of consciousness. Lu Jia thought, this was a completely safe game. He wondered if he had been deceived. The guy, pointing his finger at the blue portal, said that if you enter there, you can teleport. The guard stopped and swung his sword shrouded in light. He swung his sword forcefully, jumping upward. A stream of red energy shot out from the sword, aimed at the main character. Lu Jia was approaching the portal. The dialogue box says, Dungeon Entrance. The traveler's hate value exceeds the acceptable threshold. The main character asked what kind of nonsense this was. A stream of energy was approaching him. There was an explosion of red energy. The guy with blonde hair frowned with displeasure. Looking away, he thought that he had failed. The dialogue boxes say, Traveler Lu Jia begins the challenge. Difficulty, brutal. Cruel level challenge reward, purple level treasure chest. Attention, death in cruelty mode leads to real death. Challenge loaded, obstacle, don't be afraid of death. Have a good game. Goal, survive until the end. Tips, don't fear death is the most famous program in the entire multiverse. That's why many honored guests join. So candidates should be more courteous with guests. Candidates can test guests favor at any time which is divided into several levels, killing intent, disgust, coldness, friendliness, passion, obsession. The candidate should pay attention to personal qualities, because if he causes disgust or favor is too low, problems may arise. We wish you to enjoy the game and the blind date, and also find your destiny. The main character asked about the fact that he could die in reality. He found himself under the spotlight. He was surrounded by shouts from the public that a new candidate had arrived. The host addressed the audience and said that they had gathered to find the perfect candidate for one of their parallel dimension guests. He held up the microphone with his pinky and index finger raised. The red spotlights were turned on and shining onto the stage. The presenter, standing in an elegant pose, said, Do not be afraid of death. Lu Jia asked, Didn't the previous guy say that no one had taken part in the brutal level test before? And why did they immediately talk about the new candidate? The host announced that this time the candidate was Lu Jia who came from the human dimension. The spotlight shone brightly on him from above, and he covered his face with his hand. Smiling, the main character thought that he would see what would happen next. The audience exclaimed that he was very handsome. The host said that Lu Jia is a great candidate and he thinks he will give them a lot of surprises. He said that this program is sponsored by the Spatial Committee as well as the inexhaustible dimension of singles. The main character thought it was a surprise, and it turns out it was a blind date program. He thought that he used to be considered an arsonist, because of which a fire breaks out in the hearts of girls. Remembering how he was lying in the hospital room, Lu Jia thought that he regretted that after his injury he did not have the opportunity to meet his fans. The presenter suggested looking at what the strength of this candidate was. He exclaimed in amazement that he had a paper level. He shouted that this was the first time such a candidate had appeared on their stage. Lu Jia asked the system if there was any explanation for this level of power. The dialogue box says, in the test of this world, all creatures are united according to their class. The system recognizes the paper level as extremely weak and vulnerable. As for parallel, its combat power is quite mediocre. The strong level is the greatest combat power. And finally the brutal level is recognized by the system as the most powerful, like a boss. The main character asked that, in other words, he was in a test for the bosses, and he only has one life. He said sarcastically that it was a good test for newbies. The host exclaimed that the player Lu Jia is by far the best in history, and he will definitely show them the most beautiful and epic death. He said that in the end, only those players whose death will be the most outstanding are on the stage of this game. The main character called out to him, calling him a light bulb. The presenter asked in amazement if he was addressing him. Lu Jia told him to stop talking nonsense. He asked if he was the one who said it was a blind date. He asked where it was. He thought that he needed to follow the description of the tasks because this was the only way he could succeed. And first he needed to earn trust and then pass the test. The presenter said with a smile that in fact this was not his real body but just a hologram. He suggested looking at their candidate because he behaves extremely confidently. He announced the first girl. The screens behind him began to move apart. A girl with long black hair, wearing a white shirt and a short skirt with stockings, came onto the stage. The host announced her name, Miss Tender Red Lips. The girl opened her huge mouth with numerous sharp teeth. 
The whites of her black eyes were red. She blew a kiss to the main character. The host said that she seemed interested in their guests today. Lu Jia scrunched up his face in disgust and cursed. The presenter said that she is the star of their program, feeds on people's fear and can feel their mood. Besides, she really likes to ask the candidate about her beauty and then devour him, causing horror. He asked what their participant thought. The main character frowned and closed his eyes. Unable to hide the disgust on his face, he said that she was cute. The announcer said they should have expected nothing less from their player. He announced the next guest, a sharp leg stuck into the floor. The presenter announced the second girl, Miss Slender Legs. A girl with a huge spider body appeared in front of the main character. The host said that this is another special guest of theirs who likes to lay eggs in her partner after intimacy so that he bears the offspring instead of her. But since all her partners are dead at the moment, she had to come on their show again. A spider girl with long white hair looked at the main character with three pairs of eyes, folding her arms over her chest. The host asked Lu Jia what he thought about the second girl. Giving a thumbs up, the main character said that she was very beautiful. The presenter exclaimed that this was a great start. He called girl number three onto the stage. The main character, frowning, thought that they should not underestimate a man on his deathbed. The hand grabbed the screen and it began to sparkle. The presenter announced the third girl, Miss Beautiful Forms. A huge girl walked onto the stage with a necklace of skulls around her neck. The host said she was a famous butcher who once tortured 16 of her partners and still has a proud record of failed relationships. The huge girl opened her mouth and let out a loud scream. The host exclaimed that this was her signature battle roar. He asked the main character's opinion. Lu Jia apologized and asked if they were called. The girl looked at him sadly. She ran backstage, covering her face with her hands. The host said that deep in her heart she is the right girl. He warned Lu Jia that if he did not stop making gender-biased comments, he would be kicked out of the show. The main character, with his hand on his face, said that it seems that there are no girls in their show that meet normal human standards. The presenter said that they have those too. He said that they have the last girl left, a famous beauty in their infinite metaverse, and they say that the highest level is cruel, and she is one of those who is on the threshold of the insane level regarding the seven deadly sins, Miss Sloth. Lu Jia said that it sounds promising. The host asked Miss Sloth to come on stage. No one appeared on stage, and he looked at his watch. Looking behind the scenes, he apologized and said that they had just received a message from her that she was too lazy to come, so she would look for a partner from home while watching the show live. Having struck a pose, he announced the rules of the game. A wonderful candidate must spend the whole day outside the house with their girls in a warm and intimate relationship. The host announced that now that all the guests are in place, he asks the contestant to go outside and have a good time with their girls. Public area, court session. There was someone in a red robe standing at the judge's table. The guy with blonde hair, spreading his arms to the sides, said that he had nothing to do with it, because he was just a second-class merchant. Smiling nervously, he said that they didn't even know him, and he thought they were following him, so he ran. He said he was confident that once they found the real culprit, good would prevail. The manic man told him, calling him Jin Dolly, that they had investigated and found out that he was indeed not involved with the first wanted criminal. Jin Dolly breathed a sigh of relief. The judge said that he used the disguise to sell fake high-quality equipment, and many are unhappy with his actions, so the arbitration court should hand down a punishment. Hitting with a wooden mallet, he said that he was sentenced to credit 200 hate points and also be sent into exile in the city of hate. He called a break. The guard dragged Jin Dolly by the collar, and he desperately asked to wait. The man in white turned to the judge and asked whether they should continue searching for the traveler who was at the top of the wanted list. The judge said that there was no need for this because they had already arranged everything. He said that at the current level, the traveler would not survive the brutal ordeal. Challenge dungeons don't be afraid of death. The cemetery was littered with skulls and tombstones. A huge girl sat in the middle. She tore the bear into pieces with her hands. Nightmare done Fu, level, brutal. Taking a bite of bear meat, she asked how he dared to express himself like that. She said that she would kill him if she saw him again. Wiping her lips, Dun Fu said that she didn't think that such a wonderful game could have such scoundrels. The system alert informed the main character, Miss Tender Red Lips, friendliness. Miss Slender Legs, friendliness. Miss Beautiful Forms, disgust. The main character, walking between the tombstones, said that he did not expect her to be offended. The system reported that the attitude of Miss Beautiful Shapes had changed to murderous. Lu Jia looked to the side tensely. Dun Fu suddenly grabbed her weapon. She swung a giant sword while standing behind the main character. The sword was rapidly approaching the back of the calm Lu Jia's head. He thoughtfully asked where the beauty he had unintentionally offended had gone. 
the sword in Dun Fu's hand suddenly stopped. She thought about what he just said. The main character stepped forward, placing his hand on his chest. He said that even though he was known for his charm, he had never met a girl like her before, and after she got angry, it was like being cut with a blade. Dramatically covering his face with his hand, he asked if perhaps he had not seen all the tenderness hidden under such a powerful body. Putting her finger to her lips, Dun Fu thought about hidden tenderness. The main character, looking at the ground, said that he had never seen such a person, and he was attracted to her, because she is so gentle, cozy, kind and sharp. Clutching the sword with her hand, Dun Fu thought about tenderness and kindness. The system reported that its attitude had changed to friendliness. Lu Jia said that he was screwed when he missed such a wonderful girl, because among the thousands of beauties, there are no more girls with such a temperament. Dun Fu's heart began to beat violently in his chest. The system reported that Dun Fu's attitude had changed to infatuation. Down on one knee, Lu Jia said that he once heard that despite the dirt, there can be something beautiful hidden within, and true beauty is not on the surface, but within. Touching the small white flower with his hand, he said that this is why wonderful flowers grow in such a terrible place. He smiled and said that he thought Dun Fu was like that. Dun Fu dropped her sword to the ground. The main character turned around, pretending that he had not noticed her. Dun Fu looked at him with her hands to her face. The system reported that its favor had increased to the point of fanaticism. The system congratulated him and told him that he could choose this guest of honor as his wife. Please note that the nightmare stick has a paranoid attachment to you. For this you get 500 bonus points. Lu Jia sighed nervously. Dun Fu said that she was very touched because no one had ever done this for her, so she made a decision. The main character, scratching his head, asked what the solution was. Dun Fu began to take a very deep breath. Lu Jia looked at him, smiling nervously. Dun Fu raised her head up and let out a deafeningly loud roar. The main character staggered and grabbed his head. She shouted to her rivals to listen to her. Dun Fu shouted that Lu Jia belonged to her. The system notified that the attitude of the other two participants towards him had changed to disgust. Dun Fu smiled contentedly, placing her hands on her stomach. The main character thought unhappily how he could flirt with two other girls when she was screaming like that. Dun Fu ran towards Lu Jia, stomping her feet hard. The ground under the protagonist's feet trembled with every step. Dun Fu said that they should definitely be together forever. The main character thought that if she hugs him, he will definitely die. The web flew through the air and grabbed Dun Fu's leg. She fell sharply to the ground, hitting her face. Frowning, she raised her head, over which a large cobweb was already hanging. The web restricted her movements, and she lay motionless on the ground. Cursing, Dun Fu angrily called out to the spider. The demonic abyss spider, cruel level, said that she was truly a barbarian with muscles instead of brains, because she could not even cope with a man. Her three pairs of eyes glowed pink, and she told her to give her this handsome guy for re-education. Dun Fu furiously shouted at her not to touch it because it belonged to her. Approaching the main character, the spider asked him to let her ask him something. She asked if he agreed to bear the baby for her. Lu Jia thought that her attitude towards him had changed to disgust because of Dun Fu's words, and if he answered incorrectly, there was a 90% chance that she would kill him immediately. The spider looked at him, waiting for an answer, folding her arms over her chest. The main character thought that the best strategy now is to seize the initiative. Squinting his eyes, he asked with a grin who allowed her to talk to him like that. The spider bulged six eyes in bewilderment. Lu Jia asked if he understood correctly that she said that she only liked him because she wanted his child. Dramatically covering his face with his hand again, he asked if she simply wanted to use him as a vessel for childbearing. He asked if she had no feelings for him at all. The spider, unable to find words, tried to justify herself. The main character shouted and asked how she would explain the words she had spoken and what the surname of their child would be. Because they did not have a wedding. He said she doesn't tell him anything, but she wants him to have the baby and it's just terrible. The spider, covering her face with her hands, apologized and said that she did not mean it. The system reported that its attitude towards him had changed to friendliness. The attitude of a certain lady towards him changed to friendliness. The main character, frowning, turned his attention to the last dialogue box. On the screen that showed the broadcast, there were amazed comments from viewers. The host said that player Lu Jia took advantage of the moment to render the spider speechless, and several gender equality agencies had already expressed their support for Lu Jia. He said his words seemed to resonate with many viewers. Placing two fingers to his temple, he exclaimed in amazement. The host addressed the audience and said that Miss Sloth had just sent them a message asking them to tell them about member Lu Jia, and this was the first time Miss Sloth had shown interest in someone. 
the main character said thoughtfully, the first one came very unexpectedly. But what about the second one, standing opposite the spider? He wondered if it was possible that in addition to these three, there were other creatures participating in the test. A voice called his name. Lu Jia turned around. He saw contestant number one open her mouth wide. He thought that if this was the case, then he needed to prove himself. Tilting her head slightly, the girl asked if she was beautiful. Without allowing her to finish, the main character hit her in the face. The spider and Dun Fu looked at them in amazement. Lu Jia frowned and said that he hates people who are insecure. He asked if she didn't understand that she already charmed others with her appearance. The girl, putting her hand to hers, looked at him questioningly. The presenter, clutching his head, asked in amazement what he had just done. Waving his hand, he demanded to see again what he had done. The main character's blow was played again on the screen. The host said that they had understood everything correctly, and player Lu Jia actually hit her without hesitation. Taking a pose, he said that, as far as they know, she loves to ask questions regarding her appearance, and he believes that in this case there can only be one outcome. The presenter and the audience looked at the screen in amazement. The girl looked down, slightly embarrassed. She muttered something in bewilderment. Looking at him, she thought that there was not even a trace of fear in his heart. The girl wondered what was happening to her heart and why it was beating so fast. The system reported that his hatred value is at its limit, and he receives a new mechanism. The source of evil. Looking at his palm, which was glowing slightly, the main character said that it seemed like something had happened. Mechanism, touch of evil, source of evil, only by coming into contact with an ominous creature can you obtain this mechanism. Protective effect. The hatred value remains stable up to the maximum allowed value, there is a constant hunt. Active effect. Consumes 30% SP, allowing objects in contact to experience a state of ecstasy, duration, 10 minutes. Subjects exposed to this technique will be immune to it for the next 24 hours. Passive, thought-provoking words. His defense is constantly increasing. Objects entering a state of ecstasy can receive clues. After the end of the set time, the opposite side will not remember anything. Only follow this or that task. The task must be reasonable, consistent with the capabilities of the creature, otherwise nothing will come of it. The main character asked in amazement that this was the mechanism. Looking at the girl, who fell to her knees, covering her face with her hands, he asked if this meant that she was delighted now. The girl, continuing to cover her face with her hands, said that this was very strange. Opening her mouth wide, she shouted that she really wanted to eat him. The system notified her that she had entered a state of ecstasy, and her attitude temporarily changed to one of obsession. Stretching out her hands to him, the girl said that she adored him and wanted to be reunited with him. The main character recoiled and thought that they were all crazy. Dun Fu swung the huge sword in front of her face. Lu Jia thought that. Besides, they were terrible possessors, so they would not allow each other to even touch him. The girl grabbed the blade with sharp teeth. Dun Fu swung her sword, throwing her high into the air. She shouted that Lu Jia belonged to her. The spider, laughing, said that in the end it would still belong to her. Her sharp spider legs hung over the main character's head. Lu Jia turned around and said with a smile that he thought they had a different opinion. The girl with dark hair sat on Dun Fu's palm. They unanimously shouted at her to move away from him. Dun Fu threw the girl forward. Opening her mouth, the girl rushed to attack, raising her clawed hands. The main character thought that three monsters of a cruel level were fighting for him. Dun Fu swung her huge sword. Lu Jia thought that he knew that their love for him actually meant something completely different. The girl with dark hair and the spider fell to the ground. The main character thought that he understood the essence of this game. And no matter who he chooses, the remaining two will immediately begin to hate him, which means that in the end he will definitely die. He thought that, however, if he just watched on the sidelines, then when they finished their fight, he himself would face a brutal level monster, and then he would die anyway. Lu Jia said that he was very sorry, but he couldn't choose any of them. Dun Fu and the girl, who had grabbed the spider's hair with her teeth, froze in amazement. With his arms spread out to the sides, the main character said that battles do not give him any feelings. The girl with dark hair asked what he wanted to say. Dun Fu asked loudly what this meant. With his hands folded on his chest, the main character said that even if he destroyed the whole world like this, it would not move him. Dun Fu asked if he wanted to leave them. The spider asked if he had any doubts. Lu Jia closed his eyes with a smile and said that he simply meant that he was a very suspicious person. Eyes widening. He suggested that each of them spend some time alone with him to develop their feelings. He thought he had come up with a way to break the game. Dun Fu thoughtfully put her finger to her lips, and the main character said that after they were together, he promised that he would definitely choose his beloved. 
he thought that by not refusing them, he would create visibility for them and give them hope. He said that once he chooses his beloved, he will try his best to take care of his wife and their children to be kind and wise. The spider exclaimed enthusiastically that this was great. Lu Zha, taking the girl with black hair by the hand, said, even if I have to die at her hands. Placing her hand on his chest, he said with a smile that he would accept it with love. She looked at him in amazement. Lowering her head, she told him not to worry with a smile. Raising her head, she said that she would definitely prove to him that only she was suitable for the role of his killer. The system reported the remaining program time, 50 minutes. A small monster was devouring a corpse from the grave. He turned around sharply, green eyes sparkling. The main character hit him on the head with a backhand. The monster asked if he was suicidal. He rushed to the attack, opening his toothy mouth. Lu Zha called the girl with dark hair with faint fear. She, appearing behind the monster, asked how he dared to touch her man. The monster fearfully asked to listen to him. The girl stuck her hand into his eye. The monster ran away in panic, bleeding. The girl gave his eye to the main character. She asked if he liked it. The system reported a new item received, a ghoul's eye. Class, blue. The eyeball of a powerful ghoul monster, a very valuable material. The girl asked when they would enter the newlywed's room. She said she had a lot to tell him. Lu Zha grabbed her by the shoulders and told her to listen to him because he also had a lot to tell her. He activated suggestion and his eye flashed red. The girl asked if he hated her. She said that when he looks like that, she doesn't know when or how to kill him. The protagonist frowned and said that this seemed to be her strongest instinct. Having embraced her, he said that she was truly the most sincere and pure girl he had ever seen, and he would like to die at her hands. He said that, however, this show will not allow that to happen. The girl asked what this meant. Lu Zha said that this show arranged for so many people to see her compete. He said that they don't want her happiness and don't want to see that she's doing well because they're just making content out of them. He said he's not a provocateur, but he wouldn't put a time limit on this show. The girl said thoughtfully that this was logical. The system reported that the suggestion worked. Pointing his finger to the side, the main character exclaimed in fear that there was a monster there and he was scared. The girl ran in that direction and said that she would check who dared to scare her handsome man. Lu Zha said with a grin that since the program was plotting against him, he would arrange a surprise for them. The system reported the remaining program time, 28 minutes. The main character decided to go look for the next girl. Among the gravestones in the cemetery stood a huge bear. The girl tore it into two parts with her hands. Covered in blood, she said that this guy was very attractive and she wanted to eat him. The system reported the end of the state of ecstasy. The girl's mind cleared. Looking at her blood-covered hands, she didn't understand what she had just done. The system reported that its attitude had changed to murderous. The main character noticed that time was up. He touched the spider with his hand glowing yellow. The spider said that when she touched him, she felt a clear attraction. She asked if he had given her any intoxicating potion. Lu Zha said no. He said he was just thinking about her words. The spider, hugging him, said that she was not lying, and if he chose one of them, he would definitely be killed, no exceptions. Touching his face with her hand, she said that she was not like that, and she just wanted his child. She said that after he belonged to her, she would protect him and he would have no worries except children. She added that, moreover, he would always feel good. The spider said that she could not wait forever, and if he did not agree, she would kill him immediately. Lu Zha, closing his eyes, said that this was a tempting offer, but he also had something to tell her. Raising her head, the spider asked, what? The main character asked with a smile that if she wants a child, she should protect it properly. The spider said that she was right, and his body was very valuable. Lu Zha told her in her ear that in this test, danger awaits him everywhere. No one cares whether she can find true love, and whether he will be able to bear her a child. Activating the skill, he mentally told her to think about it. He asked whether such a program should not be interrupted. The system reported that his words had brought some sense into it. In the cemetery there was a loud voice of a girl with black hair, who, swearing, shouted that he had decided to play with her. The spider asked why the Larjameth came here. The main character said that she came for him. Putting his hand on his face, he said that he had rejected her and now it looked like she was going to finish him off. The girl jumped at him, screaming his name. The spider shot black spikes at her. The girl fought off the thorn with her hand. She landed on the ground, touching the ground with her hand. Gritting her teeth, she angrily called out to the spider. She opened her eyes wide. The spider, pointing a spike at her, told her to get out of here. The main character modestly hid behind her spider legs. He said with a pitiful face, you shouldn't do this. The girl, lowering her head, asked that the spider dared to break the rules. A huge pair of scissors appeared in her hand behind her back. 
The spider shot a web. The web enveloped the girl, gluing her to the ground. The girl clenched her teeth angrily. She cut off her own hand by swinging a huge pair of scissors. She rushed to attack the spider, which continued to shoot black spikes at her. Having cut off one of the spider's limbs, the girl found herself behind her back. The spider's cheek was slightly cut. Turning around, she asked if she really dared. The girl, holding the scissors with one hand, demanded that Lu Jia be given to her. The spider asked if she wanted to fight. She shouted that she would kill her. The girl bared her teeth, a long, sharp tongue hanging out of her mouth. They began to quickly exchange strong attacks. The system reported the remaining time, five minutes. The main character, sighing, said that nothing could be done. He said it was a disaster. Dun Fu called out to him from behind. Lu Jia turned around and said that she had arrived. Dun Fu said that she was waiting for him, but he never found her, which means he was spending time with them. Raising her sword, she asked with a sad face if he had lied to her. The main character, taking his hands out of his pockets, asked if this was possible. His hand was immediately cut off. He fell to the ground, clutching his wound, resting his back on the gravestone. He has 10% HP left. The sword stuck into the ground not far from him. Dun Fu told him that he reminded her of someone from the past. Lu Jia asked what she was talking about. She said that in those days she did not yet live in this world, but worked as a butcher. And because she was fat and ugly, no one ever looked at her. She said that she then met someone who admired her greatly and said that she had a beautiful heart. Dun Fu said that this was the first time she felt that someone cared about her, was interested in her, and it was a very pleasant feeling. The man, sitting in the car, asked her to help her and take something. Dun Fu objected and said that it was contraband. The man said that he knew that she was very kind, and therefore she would definitely help him. Several armed men ran after Dun Fu who was clutching the contraband to her chest. She broke away from her pursuers and heard a voice that, laughing, asked someone if he was afraid that this time the ugly one would not be able to return alive. The man, laughing, said that the very sight of her made him sick. His interlocutor told him to watch his words, because if it weren't for her, they would not have received such a good quality product. Dun Fu watched their conversation through the crack in the door, tears flowing from her eyes. The man, laughing, said that as soon as she said a few kind words, she was ready to follow him to the ends of the earth, like a dog, and would do everything he said. He asked where else they could find such a useful person. His interlocutor laughed and agreed. Dun Fu was clutching a bloody cleaver in her hand. The guy said that with such a product they would have any women they wanted. Soon blood splashed out, and the guys screamed in fear about where this ugly thing came from here. Dun Fu said that she cut that man into many pieces. She said that what Lu Jia said when they first met was very similar to his words, and she really liked it. Squeezing his severed hand in her hand, she said that this was why she would do to him the same thing as to that man. The main character gritted his teeth and said with a smile that then she shouldn't hold his hand. The system reported that he spent 30% SP to use Touch of Evil. Dropping his hand, Dun Fu asked what it was. Lu Jia activated suggestion. His eye flashed pink. He asked her if she remembered her name. Dun Fu asked about the name in confusion. The main character said with a smile that she participated in the 16th episode of the show, but she was always called only Miss Beautiful Curves. He said that this was all because neither the transmission nor the person who used it cared what it was called, because to them it was just a tool. Covering her face with her hand, Dun Fu asked what she should do then. The main character answered with an evil smile, kill. Raising the index finger of his remaining hand, he asked who constantly uses her to create content, who makes her act out every time as if she is a clown, who gave her such a stupid nickname and even hid her real name. He told her to kill them all. Raising her head up, Dun Fu let out a loud roar. The spider and the girl with black hair paid attention to her. Dun Fu ran towards them, swinging a huge sword, shouting that she would kill them. The system reported that there were 30 seconds left until the end of the program. Dun Fu slammed her sword onto the ground. The spider cursed, and the girl asked if she had gone crazy. The main character was crawling on the ground in the opposite direction. The system reported that there were 10 seconds left until the end of the program. HP, 5%, condition, bleeding, HP gradually decreases. Lu Jia discovered the spider's severed leg. The system reported the receipt of a new item, a spider's paw. He discovered the girl's severed hand. The system reported receiving an item, the hand of a mutilated girl. The main character discovered huge scissors stuck into the ground. The system reported receiving purple equipment, ferocious ripper. The girl asked what he was doing. The spider turned around, gritting her teeth. Dun Fu also turned her head. Lu Jia bowed and wished you a pleasant viewing with a smile. 
The dialog boxes say, HP, 0 out of 30, you are in a dying state. Congratulations, the program has been released. The main task is completed. The attitude of a certain lady towards you has increased to the point of being touched. Dun Fu remembered the words of the host who introduced her again and again on this TV show, and, in the mixture, talked about how she killed the candidate again. The main character asked her to think about the last time she lived for herself. The host exclaimed in amazement that all three of their guests lost. He said that all three girls have been on their show many times, but today the mouse managed to escape, which is incredible. The public demanded their money back because they had come to see death. The presenter said that he was forced to remind the participants that this performance would be archived, which could lead to a decrease in their rating in the program. A steel target flashed in the room. The sword, wrapped in a chain, stuck into the floor next to the leader. Dun Fu jumped onto the stage with a bang. The participants surrounded the presenter, and he heard a voice that said that now no one needs their show. The audience enthusiastically rejoiced at the upcoming fight. Laughing nervously, the host said that it seemed like the guests had some minor criticisms of the show. He asked if they were sure that they wanted to create a scandal in front of so many people, because perhaps after this they would remain alone forever. Someone said they make too much noise. They turned around. The audience covered their mouths with their hands in shock. Smiling awkwardly, the host asked why she had come. Laughing nervously, he said that if she had warned in advance, he would have met her. Miss Sloth appeared in front of them, a girl with horns, long lilac hair and pointy ears. Raising her index finger, she said, 10 seconds. She added that she doesn't like large crowds. The presenter looked at her blankly. Miss Sloth, frowning impatiently, counted to seven. The audience began to run away in fear, fearing that she would kill them. There were no spectators left in the TV show studio, only the host and participants. The presenter asked Miss Lazy if something had happened to her. Lenya asked him to give her all the information about Lu Zha. The presenter responded in amazement that he only had a paper level. Lenya frowned impatiently. The presenter fell to his knees and gave her a small card. Lenya, taking the card in his hand, looked at it. Turning to the other contestants, she told them to continue and pretend she wasn't there. She immediately disappeared from the stage. The girl with black hair said that she noticed this guy. Dun Fu slammed her huge sword onto the floor next to the leader. The host turned around, frowned and asked if she really wanted to antagonize their crew. Dun Fu shouted angrily that no one could stop her today. The main city of online games, the City of Hatred. Jin Dali washed the pillars of the building with a rag. Frowning, he said that it was all because of this guy, and if it weren't for him, he wouldn't have been sent here. The angry man who was missing several teeth, asked what he was babbling about and whether he wanted him to eat him. It was a tongue monster of a parallel level. Laughing nervously, Jin Dali apologized and continued washing the columns. The monster said upsetly that the town chief told him that he could only eat them if they disobeyed. Jin Dali thought that all the NPCs in this village were monsters who didn't consider them human. As he continued to wash the columns, he thought that one day he too would become a master. The large blue dialogue box had a list of completed challenges, Death Train, Strong, Bloody Bell Tower, Strong, Ancient Ambush, Strong, Winter Coming, Strong. Jin Dali said that he is not the only one who can pass the tests of the Strong. A new entry has appeared in the list of completed tests, Without Killing, Do Not Bother, Cruel. Jin Dali exclaimed in amazement that someone had passed the brutal level test. The system congratulated Lu Jia for completing the brutal level mission. No killing, don't bother. Counting in progress. Main task, completed. Hidden task, none. Overall rating, excellent. Reward, 5,000 points. Bonus, purple treasure chest. Due to the high difficulty of the task, the level was increased to the third, and it also received two attribute values. Since Lu Jia passed the level 3 cruel test, the system provides him with an additional reward of 10 spirit points. The system congratulated him on completing the test and informed him that he could return to the real world at any time or begin exploring the area on his own within an hour. The protagonist has chosen to explore on his own. And since he is at the top of the table, he will automatically be teleported to the player's protagonist, the City of Hate. Lu Jia noticed that his arm had recovered, and the injuries sustained in the story seemed to be healing after the story ended. Looking around, he asked if this was the so-called City of Hate. He said that it is not much different from the previous security zone. Opening his inventory, he decided to first see what the purple chest was. Skill, demonic affinity, level, purple, cost, all SP remains, and HP becomes one and cannot be restored during the entire duration of the skill. Effect, by attracting evil, you can enter a state of demonization. Duration is equal to spiritual power. Recharge is possible one time per day. Note, slight negative effect. 
Rubbing his chin, Lu Zha said that this skill seems to be life-threatening. He extended his hand to the card and said with a smile that, no matter what, you need to learn it, because, after all, it is also a skill. The system reported the completion of training in the demonic affinity skill. The main character looked at his inventory. Equipment, Ferocious Ripper, Class, Purple, Attack Power, Strong. Special Effect, Bad Omen. This weapon is infected with the breath of living beings of cruel level, causing its own HP to decrease. 1% per second, at the same time causing a panic effect in creatures below cruel level. Break. With this item, the defense ability of creatures below the brutal level becomes invisible to you, and the defense ability of creatures of the brutal level is reduced by half. Crusher. This item can absorb the soul power of killed creatures and strengthen its own soul. For each creature killed, the attack power increases by 20%, and the HP loss rate increases by 1%. The main character said in amazement that this thing is very strong. He looked at his current stats panel. He held in his hand a huge pair of scissors surrounded by dark energy. Lu Zha said that HP is indeed dropping continuously. The attack power on his stat window has changed from very weak to strong. Holding the scissors up, he said with a smile that it looks very good. But if he wants to use this thing, he needs a lot of blood restoration medicine and a lot of other pills. Someone called out to him. The big-tongued monster, laughing, said that a brand new toy had arrived. The main character turned around, enveloped in fiery blue energy. The monster asked if it was the breath of hatred. There were many screaming faces in Lu Zha's shadow. Raising huge scissors, he approached the monster. The monster, clutching his head, shouted in fear that he would leave right away. He apologized for offending him. He ran away hastily. Looking at the scissors, the main character said that it seemed that the problem was with this thing. He decided to remove it for now. Jin Dolly waved his hand and asked if he was also here because of the meaning of hatred. He offered to be friends. Lu Zha asked if he was the same equipment seller. Throwing the bucket down in irritation, Jin Dolly swore and exclaimed that it was him. Pointing his finger at him, he asked if he knew how much he had offended him, since it was because of him that he ended up in this village. The main character apologized and said with a smile that last time was his first game, and he was a beginner. Jin Dolly asked how a newcomer could become the most wanted criminal in the security zone. Lu Zha, scratching the back of his head, said that he himself didn't know, and he just came and immediately received a tip that he was wanted, and now he had just finished the beginner's test and wanted to ask someone about this world. Jin Dali said he was unlucky. He said that he would tell him everything. The other world to which they moved consists of several safe zones that have been successfully developed, as well as four areas, Baoji, Parallel, Strong and Cruel. The test simply sent them to a certain place in this world. The so-called safe zone is a place that is carefully guarded by the system, and even if he dies, there will be no losses, and various trading operations can be safely carried out. The paper level area is a low-risk area, also protected by the system. There are low-level monsters here that allow them to pass challenges, and the death penalty here is very light, just losing a few personal items. The parallel level area is an area that is only half controlled by the system, and there are very strong monsters living here, and green class equipment and various items are also produced that can be sold well in real life, and if they die there, they will lose all their items. A strong level area is an area with very low defense, so-called terrible monsters of a fierce level appear there, and only the best players of the Union can pass through this area, and for the blue class items produced there, it can be robbed at any time. At the same time, if they die in a high-level challenge, they will lose all their items and character levels, that is, they will lose everything. Jin Dali said with a serious face that, therefore, when choosing a dungeon to play, under no circumstances should he go to an area that is clearly beyond his capabilities. Players who beat the boss in a high-level dungeon were able to clear customs after paying a huge amount of money. The main character asked about the violent area. Jin Dali said that until today, no one could pass through the brutal level area because it is an area that the system does not control at all. It is said that purple grade legendary items are produced there, but if you die there, the body in the real world will also die. However, because it is in the forbidden area, it is impossible to enter the cruel grade dungeon through the portal, and many people want to visit there, but they don't find their way. Jin Dali said that this is why he very much doubts that Madman at the top of the table actually passed the test of the strong level area, because it is impossible. Lu Zha rubbed his chin and looked at the top with a smile. Jin Dali frowned and asked if he understood where he was now, not to mention the violent level area, and where the city they were transported to was located. 
he said that this is a strong level, not a safe area at all, and if he dies here, there will be a lot of problems. Smiling, he said that if he could successfully complete the task, he would reduce his hate meter and be able to return to the safe zone, and he only had 20 points, so he would be leaving soon. Jin Dolly asked about him. He said that he was a newbie and probably had fewer points. Smiling nervously, the main character said that he really had a very nice number. Lu Zha, hate indicator, infinite. Jin Dali said that in the capital of hatred there is chaos and disorder, and here the more cunning the person, the more honorable. Looking around, he said that those who were sent here because of some trifle are considered non-entities, inferior beings who carry out various tasks just to get out of here. The mummy grabbed the guy by the shoulder and told him to come in and take a look. The guy awkwardly refused and said that he was just passing by. The mummy's hand, shrouded in red energy, pierced the guy's chest right through. The mummy said that when passing by, you need to go in and buy something. The guy fell to his knees, disappearing into thin air. Jin Dolly said that the locals really don't like people very much, and here you need to behave with restraint and caution so as not to attract the attention of monsters. He said that you just need to carry out the tasks conscientiously. Noticing that the main character had disappeared, he asked where he was. Lu Jia, standing in front of the huge doors, said that he had finally found the store. Jin Dolly asked him if he was crazy. He whispered to him to quickly get out of there, because if the monster discovered him, he would be finished. The main character entered the store and he exclaimed that he had seen suicides, but not like this. Lu Jia entered the store and the doors closed behind him. A green-skinned man who looked like a goblin asked if he needed anything. Then he noticed that it was a man. The main character said that he wants to buy a restoration potion. The seller smiled and announced a special price, 500 points per bottle. Under the potions were price tags with a price of 50 points. The main character said that he sees that their regular price is 50. The seller with an evil smile said that for people the price is 10 times higher. Lu Jia turned away, and the seller, laughing, said that it was too late to leave now. The main character extended his hand to the door handles. Smiling sinisterly, he asked as he said he was going to leave. He locked the door. The seller asked in fear what he meant. Lu Jia swung the giant scissors. The seller's body was cut in half with one blow. The seller exclaimed in fear that this was the breath of evil. It dissolved in the air, breaking up into red particles. The main character was approaching him. He was shrouded in dark energy in the form of a terrible face. Lu Jia's eye flashed red. Covering himself with his hands, the seller told him not to approach. He said that he is the owner of this store, and if he kills him, the mayor of the city will not just let him go. The main character asked if their mayor would allow him to sell goods for ten times the price. The seller began to stutter, struggling to find words. The blades of the scissors began to close around him and he screamed in fear. Lu Jia grinned and offered to sell him all the items at a 10% discount. He asked if this was fair. The seller agreed with tears on his face and said that he would get a discount on everything. The main character left the store wearing a black cloak with a hood. The seller fearfully thanked him and told him to come again. Lu Jia told him not to blame him because it was just self-defense. Looking at the inventory, he said that he bought a health potion and a spirit elixir of 20 each, for a total of 200 points. Looking at the cloak in his inventory, he said that the original price of this cloak was 8,000 points, and he got it for 800. Equipment, Ghost Cloak, Defense Ability, Normal, Quality, Blue. Passive Special Effect, Hidden Evil, this item can block the breath of evil, but this only works on strong level creatures. Active Special Effect, Facelessness, you can release the full power of this item one time, causing smoke through which creatures of a cruel level cannot see you. Duration, 10 minutes. This item cannot be reused within 24 hours after expiration. Remaining points, 45-0. Raising his head up, the main character said with a smile that he liked this place. Real world. Night, supermarket. Several people were standing in line in front of the cash register. The muscular man looked at the chocolate shelf. He took one chocolate bar. There was a yellow mark on his arm, similar to the protagonist's mark. A man was walking along a dark street. Someone through the system told him that there was something that should interest him. The man replied that he said that from now on he would no longer have any friendly relations with the elders and would simply accompany his daughter. The small dog in front of him happily waved his tail. His interlocutor told him that someone had completed a brutal level dungeon. Then Xiaohua handed the dog a piece of sausage with a smile. His face suddenly darkened and he frowned. Strong level challenge, death train, player, Men Xiaohua. Sitting on the ground and hugging his knees, Jin Dali exclaimed in shock. Noticing the ghost cloak on the main character, he exclaimed that it was a store treasure that was worth at least 8,000 points. He asked how many points he had. 
Lu Jia, smiling, said that there was just a good owner who gave him a discount. Otherwise, he would not have been able to buy it either. Frowning suspiciously, Jin Dolly asked about the discount. He wondered if he was making a fool out of him, because they say that everything from this seller is always much more expensive, and he used to buy a bottle of potion there for 500 points. Looking at the main character, he thought that he was definitely a local tyrant who was deliberately acting stupid, and now he would definitely get rich, because he would never miss such a person. He thought, who knows, maybe in the future he will take it with him to the dungeon. Jin Dolly asked if they could communicate with him in the future. The main character said with a smile that he doesn't need younger brothers. Taking off his hood, Jin Dolly asked how he could say such things, and which one, Jin Dolly, was the younger brother. Folding his palms, he asked if maybe she would be a son right away. Calling him father, he said that they would have a strong relationship, like between a real son and father. He fell to his knees and Lu Zha looked at him silently. Squatting down, he put his hand on his shoulder and said that he could not help but say that his impudence was very unexpected. Jin Dolly scratched his head and said that he just wanted to be in touch with him. Clenching his fist and smiling, he told him to add him as a friend. They touched the marks on their palms, which sparkled with yellow light. The system reported that the traveler Jin Dolly was added as a friend, and now he can send him messages at any time. Jin Dolly said that it turns out his name is Lu Zha. He told him if he needed help in the future to write and he would get in touch right away. He disappeared in front of the main character. Lu Zha, looking at the mark on his hand, said thoughtfully that this is how travelers can communicate with each other. The system reported that he had reached his limit in this world, and within 10 seconds he would return. The main character said that his time has also come. The skyscraper towered over the city under the night sky. The system announced a countdown to the next test, 24 hours. Lu Zha stood on the roof of the building. Looking at his phone, he noticed that he had spent two hours in another world. But in reality only 12 minutes had passed. A small life restoration potion appeared in his hand, restoring health by 30%. Smiling, the main character said that he really was able to take it with him. He drank the red potion. Having finished drinking the potion, he threw the empty bottle behind him. The potion bottle disappeared into thin air. As he passed by the heart of Buddha Charity Foundation, he said that the orphanage on the other side was quite noisy today. He stopped and looked at the building with the red sign in the middle. The children, surrounding the guy in the t-shirt, calling him Lee, exclaimed that he had come. The girl said that recently he came empty-handed. The boy asked if it was his holiday today. Lee, holding a bag of candy in his hand, smiled and said that now he has a chance. The boy, holding candy in his hands, asked why. Lee, patting him on the head, said this time he was definitely a rich master. The boy asked what number it was. The other boy said that last time he already said that he had found a rich woman. Another boy, putting candy in his mouth, said that in the end it turned out to be a lie, and he paid money for treatment. Lee irritably asked what they understood and if they knew what money was. He asked where to get the money to support such a crowd of children without a rich daddy. Looking further, he asked why this man looked so familiar. The main character was walking down the street across the street. The nurse, noticing him, asked where he had been. She said they had been looking for him for half a day and didn't even do any research today. Lu Zha said that he came out to get some air and it still can't be cured by medicine, so it's all about fate. Passing by them, he said that they had ancient rules and he would go to his room himself. There was no need to accompany him. The nurse with blonde hair said sadly that he was in such a good mood. Another nurse said that he looked very healthy, but in fact he had such a disease. The main character said that he drank five bottles of spirit elixir and health potion, but does not even know whether this somehow affected his illness or not. Grabbing the door handle, he said that if we take time, these illusions will become more and more real each time. Opening the door to his room, he opened his eyes in amazement. Lenny was lying on his bed with her hands under her head. She said he was back. There was a game on the screen of the game console. Lying on his bed on her stomach, played a game console. Turning around, Lu Zha said that it seemed that his illness was progressing. He opened the drawer of the nightstand next to the bed. He placed three pills in his palm. The main character said that he must say that this is the most unreal hallucination since the appearance of brain problems. He said that this is a she-devil who cannot pass the first level of the seven deadly sins. Game characters Lenny died. She frowned with displeasure. Lu Zha put the pills in his mouth, smiling. He said that in about a minute she should disappear. Lenya held out the game console to his face. Folding her arms across her chest, she grumpily told him to do it if he could. The main character extended his finger towards her and touched her. Laziness with a dissatisfied face asked if he touched it. 
Lu Zha asked that the hallucinations had already progressed to the creation of a being with tactile sensations. He asked if this meant that the disease had gotten much worse. He continued to touch her, and Lenya asked if this time the source of evil had awakened the mentally retarded. Touching her horns, Lu Zha said with a smile that the feeling was very realistic, and he felt as if they were the horns of an antelope. He asked if they could be sawed off. There was a strong gust of wind coming through the window. The lights went out in the hospital corridors. The nurse went out into the corridor with a flashlight. The nurse with blonde hair asked what happened. Another nurse said it looked like the power had gone out. Sloth said that she was counting to three, and if he did not behave normally, she would hit him. She levitated in the air next to her weapon and said that she was too lazy to count. She frowned. The main character sat down on his knees and raised the game console above his head. He asked her not to be so violent for Ines. Smiling, he asked for a chance to complete the game. The lights in the hospital corridors turned on again. Knocking on the door of the room, the nurse asked Lu Zha if he was okay because the lights had just been turned off. The main character replied that he was sleeping. He added that he was naked here. The player character stood triumphantly next to the defeated monster. The dialogue box says, Laziness has lost. Congratulations on your victory. Lenya, crossing her legs, asked if she looked like this in the human world. She said it seemed like it was time to consider feeding the game's creators to her three-headed dog. The main character, with his arms outstretched, said that she has a pretty good image, and her image in the old Elden Ring is much worse. He added that, besides some perverted monkeys, people tend to imagine something terrible when mentioning the unknown, but not beauties. Bowing, he named her his fourth guest of honor and asked what she thought. Laziness, smiling, said that he has good psychological qualities, and he really deserves to survive after the awakening of the source of evil because many years have passed, and he can be considered the first. Gritting his teeth, Lu Zha asked if she wanted to say that everyone who awakened this mechanism before him died. Lenya, yawning, asked if this was normal. She said that if a newcomer cannot unite with other people when he first moves and no one shares his prohibitive level of hatred, then getting into a test of a cruel level is inevitable, and at first he also thought that he would die, but he performed very well. A blue magic circle appeared behind her and she said that she had come to remind him that if he is not confident in himself, do not go into the test alone. However, if he performs well, they will meet again soon. The main character asked what this source of evil meant, and whether it was somehow connected with his illness. He asked if creatures from their world could cross over into this one. Sloth waved her hand with a smile and told him not to worry because ordinary creatures would not be able to pass, and she was just a special case. She added that there were also a lot of problematic exhibits on their side, and even when she came here, she didn't really want to attract their attention, so she wouldn't be here for long. She said that if he wanted to know the source of evil, he had to try his best not to die. She disappeared along with the magic circle. Lu Zha looked down and said with a smile that it seemed like he had no reason to refuse. Looking at the game console, he asked if she left it for him on purpose. Game console NS3000, quality, blue, one-time use item, will disappear after use. Effect, this item belongs to a very bad player. She was finally able to beat the final boss after losing multiple times, and that kind of perseverance is very commendable. After use, you can call the owner of the item for help one time. Note, not a bad reward for beating the game, right? Lu Zha exclaimed that this was a substitution. He asked if she was ashamed. On the book page it says, Welcome to Afterlife Express Delivery. All employees are requested to adhere to the following rules. 1. Express delivery packages must be guaranteed to be handed over to the customer. 2. If the client is disobedient, you must force him to accept the package by all possible means. 3. Time is also very important, being late is impossible. 4. If the client is dissatisfied, you will be held responsible. 5. Don't leave your order or leave early. 6. Workers should under no circumstances rebel against the director. We wish you a pleasant work. The dialogue boxes say, Traveler Lu Zha, Level 3, Start Multiplayer Challenge, Combined Difficulty is Strong Level. Reward, Blue Quality Treasure Chest. Dying in a high level challenge can completely reset your levels, skills, and existing items. Compatibility complete. The level is loaded. We wish you a pleasant game. It has been detected that you are participating in multiplayer mode for the first time, which is anonymous by default. You can switch the ID display at any time. The main character found himself in front of huge doors. Assignment. Please take the employee handbook with you and proceed to the staff area before the end of the call. Lu Zha read the employee handbook. After opening the door, he said that there were indeed a lot of people in this multiplayer mode. 
a sound came from the speakers. There were many different people standing in the opulent room, some of whom were dressed in armor. They turned towards the main character. The door closed behind him. Lu Jia walked through the crowd of people. The guy in dark glasses asked where a person with level 3 came from. Since this is a strong dungeon, he asked if it was a mistake. Another guy told him not to fuss because usually in a multiplayer game like this there would be some kind of master leading everyone. Someone stamped their foot forcefully, addressing the newcomers. Level 10 Zion Kun, a guy wearing sunglasses with a mohawk, said with a wide smile that this is a strong level dungeon, so they better not cling to it. The guy in dark glasses, noticing that he had turned off the anonymous mode, asked what that panel in front of him was. Another guy asked if he didn't see that he was from the Dragon Union, and Mad Blade was his rank, only available from level 10. Another guy said he was the guy and it looked like they would pass now. Zion Kun said that this was a strong level dungeon and they had not completed it, so if they listened to it, they would all pass. The guy in the crowd told him not to worry because he would try his best. Another guy said they will do whatever they say. Zion Kun said that ordinary players are the same everywhere, and when they enter a strong level dungeon, they become very scared. He stopped, looking somewhere. He pointed his finger at the main character. Lu Jia raised his eyebrows questioningly. Leaning towards him, Zion Kun asked what was wrong with his level. He asked how he got here with the third level of compatibility, and shouldn't he be among the paper ones? The main character smiled and said, he doesn't know, maybe he was just unlucky. Turning away, Zion Kun waved his hand indifferently and told him to just leave him alone and watch him work. Lu Jia grinned and said, maybe it will be easier this way. A beam of energy flashed through the room, passing through Zion Kun's head. The guys exclaimed in amazement. Zion Kun's glasses shattered into pieces. He fell to the floor and the system reported that he was dead. Holding a revolver in his hand, someone greeted them to work in the afterlife delivery. An elderly man in a top hat blew on the barrel of a revolver and said, to express his friendship, let him first deal with the employee who violated the third law of the handbook about being late. He asked if anyone had any questions. Pompously spreading his arms to the sides, he greeted the new employees at the afterlife delivery point. The guy in dark glasses asked in amazement what kind of jokes these were. Another guy asked about him instantly killing a ranked player with one shot. The director told them not to be so surprised, because if they had seen the directory, then they should know that their delivery staff could not rebel against the director under any circumstances, and if they had not seen it, then they needed to open it right now. The main character thoughtfully said that Article 6 of the reference book means that in this test the director can kill an employee with one blow. The director said that there are three orders in their directories. The first is a relatively simple order of blue quality. The second and third are slightly more difficult, they are red. Raising three fingers, he said that their job was very simple. You just need to complete three orders from the directory and you can get out of here alive. He told them to try. The system reported the activation of the main task, to get out alive from the delivery point of the underworld. The guy with the scar on his eye said that if the difficulty is small, then there will be no problem. He tore a red page from the reference book. The dialog box says, Traveler Lu Zheng successfully received the order, order content, slap. Recipient, strong level low grade boss, Hell Wolf. Lu Zheng asked displeasedly what kind of order this was. He asked if they wanted him to kill himself. He shouted that he refused and would not deliver it. Particles of yellow energy flew through the air. The system reported that Traveler Lu Zheng was killed. The director, holding a revolver in his hand, named the fifth article in the employee handbook, Do not refuse an order. Smiling, he told them not to forget about it. Lu Zheng crumbled into blue particles, and the director said that he was too patient with people who broke the rules. He said with a smile that as long as they all followed the rules, he would not touch them. He said it was time to start because there was not much time. The guy in the dark glasses said that this was a very difficult order, one of those orders after which he would certainly die as soon as he took it. Someone chuckled and said that this order did not seem so difficult at all. They turned in his direction. The guy with the iron armor on his arms was holding a blue page in his hand. A dialogue box reported that Tiang Zhen had successfully accepted the new order. Order contents, dinner, delivery address, rotating skyscraper, room 306. Tiang Zhen was holding a yellow box in his hands. Grasping the box with both hands, he began to walk away. The guy with the dark glasses and the guy with the fur collar looked at each other. They followed the fleeing Tiang Zhen. The main character said, lightning fast reaction. He said with a grin that the provision indicated only express delivery, and once received, the order could not be cancelled. He said that he sees nothing wrong with intercepting someone else's simple order. The guy, flexing his fists with a big smile, told him to look at his employee handbook. 
Lu Jia chuckled and said that it looks like he is the famous Xiao Men Zing. The guy in green clothes said that his level was so low that his death would hardly sadden anyone. The other guy with an unpleasant grin said that he only had one red order that he could exchange with him, and he could guess which one. Smiling slyly, the main character said that he wanted to exchange with him. He remembered how he, playing NS3000 in his hospital room, asked Sloth, separating one evil from another, if he could pass the tests below the cruel level. Sloth said they were right and it would increase the difficulty of other people's trials. She said that, for example, a test that initially had a parallel level of difficulty may become stronger due to his intervention. But even so, there is a high probability that he, unlike others, will encounter some other difficulties. The main character, continuing to play the game, said that it was cruel. Lenya said that his reaction was very boring. Lu Jia smiled and said, if you really want to exchange. He showed the red pages of the directory. Xiao Menzing frowned when he saw the red task. The guy with the green clothes said in disappointment that he was a liar. The main character told him not to worry because there was more to come. He showed another red page of the directory. The guy in green exclaimed in amazement that this was another red mission. The guy, squinting, asked if he could even survive. Lu Jia showed another page of the reference book with a smile. The guy in green exclaimed in shock that all three of his orders were red. Closing the directory, the main character asked if anyone else wanted to exchange tasks with him. Xiao Menzing asked who would even want to change with him. He told him not to even think about touching their orders. People, leaving, said that he would deal with this himself, and it was better to stay away from him. Looking after the leaving crowd, Lu Jia said that now they despise him. The director clapped his hands without letting go of the revolver. Leaning on the railing, he said that this was the first time he had seen a person receive three red orders at once, and this was indeed quite a rare occurrence. He said that he was sorry that at his level it was just a waste of time. The main character asked him if he wanted him to do this to amuse him. The director said with a smile that he would not give him any concessions, but since he wanted it so much, he could answer any of his questions. Putting his finger on the trigger of the revolver, he said that he would answer only one of his questions. The main character, closing his eyes, said that what he had just done looked pathetic, as if he was deliberately forcing everyone to refuse red orders and take simpler, blue ones. Opening his eyes, he said that he had a guess the reward for completing the red order, which he pays to the performer, should be greater. Opening his eyes, the director looked at him and asked, what? Lu Jia said with a grin that if his guess was correct, then successfully completing the three red orders would be a serious financial burden for him. So when a newbie like him received all these red jobs, he must have felt relieved. Grinning, the director said that he was confident and endowed with hidden potential. He said that, of course, tasks of different difficulty have different rewards, but will he survive the process? He asked if he had any more questions. Turning around, Lu Jia said no, because he had no desire to make friends with his revolver yet. Turning around, he added that he said there was only one question. The director took the hat in his hand and, grinning, said that it was very good. Smiling ominously, he said that nothing less could be expected from a traveler who had experienced such things. Laughing unpleasantly, he said, go ahead, Lu Jia. The main character went out onto a dark street. The head of a guy standing nearby sparkled brightly. Lu Jia, covering his face with his palm, exclaimed in amazement why it was so bright. The guy, flashing his bald head, said that he had three blue orders. He suggested that the main character change. Pointing his thumb at himself, he said that at this level, he would not be able to complete the three red tasks, and if he left it to him, he could survive. The main character frowned and thought about this guy's rating. The guy grinned. The clumsy level 15 warrior Men Zio Huan, flashing his bald head, said, if he has any grievances, he can challenge him. Lu Jia thought that Jin Dali had mentioned him to him before, saying that this guy had challenged a strong level dungeon. Men Zio Huan said that he seemed to have heard of him. He told him to name his decision. A yellow light enveloped the directory and he said with a grin that it was a smart choice. He told him not to worry, he would take good care of him this time. The main character tore out the red page from the reference book. Menzio Huan's eyes widened in shock. The system reported that the order was successfully received. Lu Jia walked past him and apologized, saying that his hand twitched. Menzio Huan told him to stop, swinging his mechanical arm, accelerated by the engine. He angrily asked how he dared to play with him. Huge scissors appeared on the ground, shrouded in dark energy. Menzio Huan's eyes widened in shock. The motor in his mechanical arm stopped and he froze. The main character asked with an evil smile what he wanted him to know. 
Then Zio Huan lowered his head and grinned, showing his thumb. He said with a wide smile that, of course, it was also very easy to negotiate with a person of his level. Noticing the effect, he wondered if it was possible that it was the cruelty level equipment. Lu Jia smiled and said that there seemed to be a misunderstanding between them. He thought that, of course, high-level players know a lot about the product. They laughed tightly. Men Zio Huan thought, still waters run deep. The main character thought that this man knew how to trim the sails to the wind. Waving his hand, he said that since it was just a misunderstanding, he would go. Men Zio Huan waved his hand back and told him to take care of himself. With an evil smile, he said that this guy was a tough nut to crack, and it looked like he needed to find someone else if he wanted to get a better reward. Several people surrounded him, and he said that first they should get rid of these annoying midges. Placing his hand on his face, he asked about how they would not leave him behind even if the parallel level tests turned into strong ones. He asked if they were afraid of being expelled. The girl with dark hair said that no one can go against the orders of the three elders, not even him. Armed with steel claws, he charged and asked if he died while testing his strength. Wouldn't it be a waste? Men Zio Huan grabbed his face with a steel hand. The others opened their mouths in amazement. Lifting him off the ground, holding his face, he asked if they had any doubt about their own strength. Blazing with an ominous aura, he let go of the guy's face, and he fell to the ground. The guy crumbled into blue particles, and the girl in black clothes said to pay attention to his mechanical strength. Men Zio Huan said with an evil smile, Bingo. Swinging his steel fist at the two guys, he said, let the red task in your hands be your reward. The dialog box says, extended order contents, delivery item, tattered doll, recipient, strong psycho boss, delivery address, twilight villa, 169. Lu Jia found himself in front of a large steel gate. He said the thing looked like lost property. He looked at the doll covered in red spots. The dialog box says, tattered doll, explanation, she took it with her and got lost. If I see a doll, does that mean I found it too? Shaking off the dust from the doll, the main character said that he doesn't even have a package, and the delivery service is careless about its work. Having found the right address, he asked if crazy people really lived here. He pressed a button on the intercom. Lu Jia said he had a package for the crazy lady. There was no answer from the intercom, so he listened to the speaker. Suddenly, a loud scream came from the speaker. Grabbing his ear, he said that it was somehow not very friendly. The dialog box says the task, deliver food. Delivery address, rotting pastures. The red monster, wearing a sheep's skin, thanked him for bringing the food. Angry wolves were approaching the courier. The guy tied upside down to the ceiling exclaimed that he hadn't even completed the order yet. The monster, cutting the rope with its claws, asked what he was talking about. He asked if he thought the little food he brought was enough. He added that it would be just right with him. The guy fell screaming to the wolves grinning their teeth. The dialogue box says, Task, deliver the temple bell, delivery address, Chanchen Temple. The monk bowed and thanked him for his help. A girl with pink hair and blue eyes, surrounded by wooden staffs, asked if this was their gratitude. Bald monks surrounded her. Parts of their bodies were missing skin, exposing red muscle. The monk said that she seemed to have misunderstood something, because everything was clearly stated in the order. The monk with the face of a dead man, smiling with his face with missing lips, said that they needed her for burial. The dialogue box says, low-level order, deliver a love letter, delivery address, garden of imprisonment. The girl thanked him and picked up an envelope with a heart-shaped seal. The system reported that the task was completed. The girl, dressed in red clothes, said that this was the first time she had received a love letter from anyone. Zio Menzing said with a laugh that it was quite simple. The dialogue box says, low-level order, deliver weight loss medicine, delivery address, Huanquin Fitness Center. A fat guy in a t-shirt, looking at the box, said that they had finally arrived. A dialogue box indicated that the task was completed. The guy in green scratched his head and said with a smile that low-level orders were really quite simple, and it was very easy. The dialogue box says that the courier was able to complete low-level orders number 5 and 7, but could not complete high-level order number 4. The main character said that, if you look at it that way, low-level orders are actually quite simple. Scratching his head, he said that this high-level customer had lowered his HP to 20% with his roar. Taking the red potion in his hand, he said that, fortunately, he had enough medicine for now. After drinking the potion, he regained his full health and threw the empty bottle to the ground. He put his fist to his mouth and coughed. Leaning towards the intercom, he asked if anyone was there. He said he was a courier. A voice was heard through the interference, telling him to enter himself. Lu Jia thought that the voice seemed to belong to some cute girl. He asked how he could enter since their gate was locked. 
There were sounds of static coming from the intercom. Taking the huge scissors in his hand, he said, he understood. Swinging his scissors, he cut through the steel gate. He walked towards the door, holding scissors and a doll. After opening the doors, Lu Jia said hello and said that he was from Huanquan Delivery. Seeing something, his eyes widened and a nervous sweat ran down his face. The room was filled with garbage, and on the couch was the back of a girl with dark hair, who was watching a TV that had nothing but white noise on it. Smiling, the main character apologized for the trouble and said that her order was here. The girl turned around, put her finger to her lips and told him that the smiley had just fallen asleep, and he almost woke her up. Her skin color was unnaturally green. In her hands was something sewn from body parts of various animals. She asked if her emoji wasn't cute. The main character smiled and said that he had a bright future ahead of him. Handing over the doll, he asked if she would accept delivery. The girl turned slowly, pointing her finger at the doll. She asked if it was a laughing doll. Looking at the something in her hands, she asked if Zio Zio was not in her hands. Staggering, she asked that it seemed that Zio Zio was lost, and she was looking for her. She then said that Zio Zio was in her hands. Lowering her head, the girl said that she understood, and he must have decided to deceive her and steal her Zio Zio. Throwing the doll on the floor, she laughed and shouted that he was definitely a liar. Her eyes glowed green and she screamed that he wanted to steal her child and should die. The girl ran at Lu Jia, brandishing a kitchen knife. Lu Jia, running away from her, drank a health restoration potion. He said that she does not allow him to explain himself and interrupts him all the time. The girl screamed angrily that she would kill him. The main character was approaching the door. He grabbed the doorknob. He opened the door and a girl with a knife was approaching his back. The girl screamed through the crack in the door to give her Zio Zio. Lu Jia closed the door, pressing it with his back. The girl knocked hard on the locked door. The main character said with a nervous smile that the door wouldn't last long and he needed to find another way out. Looking around, he found himself in a clean pink room and said that this room was completely different from what he had seen before. The wooden door was covered in cracks. Lu Jia, looking at the drawings on the wall, said that he felt like it was drawn by a child. The drawing said, I hope that mom will be happy every day, and then I will be happy too. The main character looked down. The calendar says, 100 days without my Zio Zio. A red circle was drawn in each cell of the calendar. Taking the calendar in his hands, Lu Jia said that she had really been looking for her for a long time. On another page it was written, 2000 days without my Zio Zio. Turning the page, he found that the circles had stopped and the entire sheet had been crossed out. Something fell out of the calendar. The yellow card said, Huanquan Express, pay enough and we'll deliver whatever you want. Ignoring the furious knocks on the door, the protagonist said that the boss seemed to have gone too far with his lies. The knife pierced the wooden door. Lu Jia said that she was completely crazy, and in order to receive the courier normally, she should first calm down. After saying that this room looked quite impressive, he noticed the wardrobe. Opening the closet, he said that it looked like he had an idea. The girl punched the door. Opening the door, she angrily said to return Zio Zio to her. Seeing something, she stopped and opened her mouth in amazement. The main character coughed slightly. Dressed in a pink dress, he extended his arms to her and called her mom. The woman asked if it was Zio Zio and when she grew up like that. Hugging Lu Jia, she said that it doesn't matter because her mother loves her anyway, and she was indeed right, she is alive. The main character looked at her with a crazy smile and said no. Taking the knife from the woman's hands, he said that she was wrong. Sticking the knife into his stomach, he asked with a bloody smile if she wanted to protect him. The woman repeated the word no in horror. The doll lay next to a notebook in which someone was drawing with crayons. A man in a top hat approached a little girl in a pink dress and asked to let him ask her one question. The girl turned around and asked what the question was with a smile. Her face contorted in horror. Splashes of blood stained the doll. The black-haired woman said to Zio Zio with a smile that it was dinner time. She opened her eyes in horror. There was a kitchen knife on the floor in a pool of blood. Holding the main character dressed as Zio Zio in her hands, the woman raised her head up and screamed. The dialogue box says, You have activated touch of evil and hypnotic speech. Lu Jia asked her to wake up from her madness. The director greeted someone at Huanquan Express and said that they would deliver whatever they needed. Smoking a cigar, he held up a yellow card and said their motto is, When you want something, we'll deliver it, and when you don't know what you want, we'll create it. The tired-eyed woman asked if they had seen her daughter. She said her name was Zio Zio and she was wearing a pink dress. The director said that they saw her. The woman, grabbing his hand, begged, asking him to tell her. The director said that he would be happy to tell her, but their company's services are not free, 
and they may have to pay a hefty price, and he is not sure if she will want to. The woman, falling to her knees, shouted that she would do whatever they said if only they would return her daughter to her. The director's hand was enveloped in green flames. He told her to relax, give him her sanity, and soon her daughter would return. His hand was over the woman's head and he said that he was confident that she would become a regular customer of their company. The woman's skin turned green and sunken and she told him not to stop. The main character, placing his hand on his side, said that she was trying her best to resist hypnosis. The woman said in an absent voice that Zio Zio just left. She begged him not to wake her. The main character turned around and said, self-deception, an idea created by the hands of another person. The woman was tied with puppet strings, asking not to wake her. A voice called out to her, calling her mom. The woman raised her head. Zio Zio stood in front of her, and the woman said that it was not so. Zio Zio's image shattered into pieces like glass, and she shouted to stop pretending to be Zio Zio. The main character appeared in front of her, dressed in a pink dress. Congratulating her, he said with a smile that she had recovered most of her sanity and cognitive functions, and in fact she had long since woken up, she just didn't want to admit it to herself. The woman's skin color returned to its natural shade, and she asked in amazement that she had woken up. Kneeling down, Lu Jia said that this doll was sent to her by his boss, the master of Huanquan Express, and she should independently understand what it could mean. He said that there were many things in the world that she could occupy herself with instead of deceiving herself and depending on others. She told her to get it in delivery and to remember to leave a good review. The woman looked at the doll in confusion with tired eyes. The dialogue box says, Congratulations, you have completed the lost doll order. You have been promoted to excellent employee. Reward. Pre-order fees increased by 100% and customers will leave fewer negative reviews. The main character turned around and said that it was time for him to go. The woman asked him to stop, and he stopped. She asked to be allowed to ask if her daughter was still alive. Turning around, Lu Jia smiled and told her to go and have a look, and then she would find out everything herself. The woman opened the curtains on the windows. She put the doll on the shelf. Lowering her head, she told Zio Zio to wait for her. The stone figurine shook. Having fallen, it broke into pieces. The director took the head of the figurine in his hand. He said with a smile that the crazy lady's order was completed and he was sorry because she was a good customer. Smiling widely, he announced the beginning of the second act of the play. Turning to the gray door, he told Zio Zio to speak. Something like a groan sounded from behind the door. Huanquan Fitness Center. The fat guy with the box on his lap said that this time he will definitely control his appetite. He decided to look at diet pills. Opening the box, he found a burger, fries and fried chicken. The guy, sweating profusely, said that it looked very tasty. Drooling, he repeated that he was very hungry and wanted to eat. Plunging his face into the box, he began to eat its contents. The guy threw the empty box on the floor. Veins were visible on his skin. He turned his head sharply, opening his mouth. Looking at the leaving courier with bloodshot eyes, he spoke about the taste of the food. The guy in green clothes, running away, shouted at him not to come closer. Grabbing him by the neck, a strong enemy, a hungry walker, shouted that he was very hungry and the courier could be eaten. Garden of Confinement Zio Menzing fell to the ground in fear and asked what she was up to. The red-robed woman, a strong enemy, the jade-faced bride, told him not to be afraid, and she would ask him one question. The guys around her disappeared, crumbling into pixels. Picking up a piece of paper, she asked if he knew who wrote this love letter. The letter contained insults and death wishes in sloppy handwriting. Shaking his head, Zio Menzing said that it was not him. Squeezing the piece of paper, the bride said that then it would be of no use. Zio Menzing screamed as he sprinkled blood on the ground. The dialogue box says, Please note, some customers have left bad reviews. A complaint was filed against the courier. Traveler Jan Xiang and Su La died. Men Zio Huin, running through the forest, said that low-level orders have their own problems. Looking at the red piece of paper, he said that if he had completed more difficult level tasks, he would have received more benefits, and he was sorry that he could only get one. Delivery item, love, recipient, strong boss, crypt king. He said he liked this order. He noticed a rustling in the bushes. Stopping, Men Zio Huin said that there was clearly some kind of ambush here. Looking behind the bushes, he asked what kind of monster was in this test. He found the main character taking off his dress, saying that the size of this skirt was too small, and the material was somehow thin. Men Zio Huin cursed loudly. The main character looked in his direction. Waving his hand, he said that he saw him. Men Zio Huin thought that there was no monster here. Noticing the excellent worker sign above his head, he asked if he had completed the red order. 
Liu Jia, while getting dressed, said that he met a man possessed in women's clothing who wanted to look better than him, but he still won. Then Xiao Huan asked if he still had such orders. The main character said yes and asked if he wanted to try it himself. Then Xiao Huan refused, frowning. He thought that he had incredible abilities in this strange weapon, and it seemed like he was one of those who had passed the cruel level test. He asked if he wanted to collaborate with him. He said that they could help each other complete the red tasks. The main character asked about cooperation. Men Zio Huan said that he must have seen the system prompt, and since these monsters leave bad reviews, they will try to hunt down the couriers, and this is the working mechanism of the dungeon. He said if they collaborate, it will be easier to fulfill premium orders. Handing him a red sheet, he said that in order to prove the sincerity of his intentions, he could familiarize himself with the contents of his order. Lu Jia glanced at his order. Men Zio Huan asked if something was wrong. The main character said with a smile that he will know when he sees it. Another red leaf appeared in his hand. Delivery item, light, recipient, strong boss, crypt king. Looking at the two order sheets, Men Zio Huan noticed that they had the same recipient. Lu Jia said that the crypt king is quite interesting. Men Zhao Huan said that in this case they should stick together. A hungry walker, standing among the bushes, his mouth wide open, spoke about the smell of food. Men Zhao Huan, hiding behind a tree, told the main character that he would not be tracked. He told him to head to the mission site while he tried to get rid of him. The main character told him to wait. Men Zhao Huan asked in amazement what he was up to. Lu Jia, wearing a ghostly cloak, with a sly smile told him to follow him and then maybe they could avoid him without taking any damage. Men Zio Huan thought that all the monsters in this test were quite strong, and unless they thought of something, they would not defeat them. Shrouded in a fiery aura, he thought that this guy was still around, but he was definitely not going to reveal his trump card. He asked him if he was okay. He said that if he couldn't handle it, he could go and he would figure something out. The main character answered, everything is fine, and called to go. Men Zio Huan opened his eyes in amazement. The hungry walker turned around and said, it smells like meat. Looking behind the tree, he said not to hide and let him eat him. Men Zio Huan was lying on the ground. Lu Jia, dressed in a ghostly cloak, raised a huge pair of scissors above him, talking about fresh prey. Under the hood, only red eyes and an ominous smile were visible, and he asked, what? Squinting his eyes, he said that another one had coveted his prey. The hungry walker fearfully said that this was a misunderstanding, and he was just passing by. The main character laughed as he approached him. The hungry walker exclaimed that he was already leaving. He ran away hastily, stamping his feet. Lu Jia said that the effect of the evil spirit cloak is really good. Evil spirit cloak, faceless effect, you can unleash the power of this item once and summon smoke that will not be visible to the eye of the ferocious creature. Action time, 10 minutes, reuse is possible only after 24 hours. The main character said that he is gone and he can get up. Men Zio Huan, standing up on the ground, said that, to be honest, he doesn't think it's worth keeping dangerous people like him as enemies. He suggested we become friends. Lu Jia replied, why not? They touched their marks and he asked if he had any blood medicine with him. A strong gust of wind blew. Men Zio Huan said that in this test, the monster will go crazy and hunt down the traveler if it is not satisfied with the order. And although these orders are quite simple, they will definitely result in bad reviews. Frowning, he said that he had been here before with old friends, and at that time, everyone preferred low-level orders. He said that they ended up surrounded by crazy monsters on all sides and he was forced to flee, but the ordeal was not completed. The main character said with a grin that this is why he thinks that completing difficult orders might be an ideal way to cross the border. He asked if he was ready. Clenching his steel fist, Men Zio Huan smiled and said yes. Lu Jia activated his cloak skill. The crowd of people ran quickly. The guys in red clothes asked what was going on, because they had completed the order. They were being chased by a strong level monster, similar to a centipede, a digger. The guy, running away, said that everything was going well, but after completing the order, this guy simply went crazy. He asked Lee if there was something wrong with the things they had delivered. Lee, the guy with glasses, asked what their order was. Looking at the blue piece of paper, he read, pesticide delivery. Lee swore. The guy pointed his finger at the running man and said that there was someone there. Lee smiled and told him to lead the monster there and if he switched to them, they would be safe. Men Zio Huan turned sharply, and the guy asked in amazement why he was running here. Men Zio Huan ran between them and called for help. The main character, laughing, held huge scissors above his head. Lee exclaimed in amazement that things were even worse here. They hid in the bushes while Lu Jia chased Men Zio Huan with scissors. Seeing them, the digger froze in place and widened his yellow eyes in shock. 
It immediately also jumped into the bushes. The main character and Menzio Hewan ran past them. The guys and the digger breathed a sigh of relief. Then they noticed each other. Digger chased after them again, and Lee tiredly called for help. Menzio Hewan said that all the monsters they encountered gave way to them. He asked if he was really that scary. Lu Zha, who was under the effect of ferocious corrosion, drank a health restoration potion. He asked if this was the peculiarity of handsome guys. Still laughing maniacally, he told him not to run away. Menzio Hewan wondered if this guy was really an ordinary person. Chanchen Temple, the system congratulated you on completing your order for the delivery of temple bells. The huge bell was covered in blood. The dialog box says, Congratulations, you have completed the Huanquin Express Premium Order and become a great employee. Please keep up the good work. Running her finger over the blood on the bell, the girl asked that more than half of the resources were spent on it. And this was not even the most difficult order. Sitting on one knee, she said that by doing it, you could actually get a promotion. And it seemed that the previous strategy was wrong. The dialog box says, Zhu Peng, we are willing to hire you at a higher price so that you can complete the order. Let us know if you are interested in this offer. Dead monks lay around the bell. Zhu Peng put on her dark glasses and asked if it was the elder's subordinate as she left. The red-haired girl, sitting on the roof, said that nothing less could be expected from Zhu Peng, and she completed high-level orders on her own. She said this is the power of a strong player. A guy with long green hair and two braids said that she was really strong. Zhu Peng replied, more or less. She asked what they brought this time. The red-haired girl said with a grin, blue suit killing Men Zio Huan. Zhu Peng, adjusting her dark glasses, asked why Sam Lao was being generous this time, and whether Men Zio Huan had offended him. The girl, sinking to the ground, said that in fact there were much more generous offers. Zhu Peng told her to tell. The girl, leaning her hand on a guy with blonde hair, told her to find a guy who had passed a cruel test, and the payment would be twice the amount of this order. Zhu Peng, passing by her, told her to forget about it, because he knows how to kill people, but not find them. She said they know her terms and payment comes first. The girl said that if she remembered correctly, she knew Men Zio Huan, and perhaps she was willing to make a little concession. Zhu Peng, remembering how she and he stood back to back, said that she was right, and they were on pretty good terms, even once winning a difficult test. She added that if he had not been there then, she probably would have died, so it can be said that their relationship was in some sense life-threatening. A dialogue box appeared in front of the girl. Zhu Peng, adjusting her dark glasses, told her to tell her superiors that she needed to flip a coin. The main character and Men Zio Huan stood among the dry dead trees. Men Zio Huan said that it should be here. In front of them were several graves with stone headstones. He said that he has no idea what this crypt king is like. They walked among human skulls and bones. Someone called out to them, saying, Man. Men Zio Huan raised his head up. A monster with a large mouth lined with sharp teeth asked how he dared to enter the domain of the king of the crypt. He was hanging from a dead tree, green eyes blazing. Lu Zha raised his head and asked in amazement, What? The monster suddenly jumped from the dead tree. He landed with a crash on the ground in front of them. His eye was bandaged and he said that the crypt king hated people. Men Zio Huan showed him a red piece of paper and told him to calm down because he was here to deliver his order. The crypt king said that he remembered and he wants his eyes back. Men Zio Huan asked what he was talking about. The crypt king, speaking of himself in the third person, said that one day he was enjoying a delicious meal and then he met a terrible nomad man who stole his eye. He said that he was filled with hatred, but that man had a terrifying bodyguard, and he would not dare to take revenge. Men Zio Huan folded his arms and said that this was some kind of nonsense. He asked how some monster could be the bodyguard of some nomad. Lu Zha coughed and agreed with him. The Crypt King said that he finally found Huanquin Express and placed an order, and he wants to get his eyes. Raising a finger of his paw, he said, either they bring his eyes or give them their own. Men Zio Huan and the main character noticed people appearing behind them. The green hair guy told Men Zio Huan that it seemed like they had arrived just in time. A girl with red hair sat on the shoulder of a guy with blonde hair. Zhu Peng, taking off her dark glasses, smiled and said that they had not seen each other for a long time. The guy with green hair said that this time they would watch him run away. Lu Zha asked, enemy. Men Zio Huan, rubbing the back of his head, replied, friend. He said that if you give her some money, she will even kill her own father. While straightening her hair, Zhu Peng said that she would not hide it, it flattered her a little. Approaching them, she said that this time San Lao was really generous. She told him to let her kill him. Raising his palm, the main character invited her to discuss something. 
pointing two fingers to the side. He asked if he could leave while they were fighting here, since he was just a newbie. Zhu Peng smiled and apologized and said that they said that Men Xiao Huin's assistant, if there is one, should also be involved in this, and he is clearly not a newbie. Lu Jia sighed and said that there was nothing to be done then, and he originally planned to treat her as a newcomer as well. With his back to the Crypt King, he told him that only he could decide this. The Crypt King looked at him blankly. Zhu Peng looked at them in bewilderment. The Crypt King, pointing his index finger forward, asked if this was not where he should go. The main character took off the hood from his head. Smiling widely, he asked him if he didn't recognize him. The Crypt King's eyes widened in shock. He remembered how Lu Jia hit him on the head with a backhand. Holding his hand over his eye, he turned around in fear. The main character looked at him with a smug smile. Hugging a monster girl with black hair, raising his clawed paw, the Crypt King exclaimed that it was him, and he had been looking for him for a very long time. The guy with green hair asked with a grin if this newcomer was stupid. The girl with red hair exclaimed with a grin that he himself went into the clutches of the monster. She asked if it was suicide. The Crypt King's paw trembled, and the protagonist said that he was still the same. The Crypt King's paw stopped, and he thought that this guy was too calm. Lu Jia lowered his head with a smile. Opening his eyes, he asked why not continue. The Crypt King thought that he knew that this guy must have done this on purpose and he needed to attack him. Turning around nervously, he thought that this terrible woman was most likely somewhere nearby, and he was afraid to think what would happen if she saw that he was wounded. Putting his paw on the main character's shoulder, he said that he was his friend. The girl with red hair and the guy with green hair exclaimed in amazement. Lu Jia nudged the Crypt King and asked how about helping him get rid of these people. Restlessly scratching his head, the Crypt King said that there were quite a few of them. The main character, holding a green glowing eye in his hand, asked what he was looking at. The Crypt King exclaimed that it was his eye. Lu Jia said that if he behaves well, he will give it to him. Turning around, he said, if he doesn't want to, forget about it, and he'd better tell his beloved about it. He said that he even liked this thing and it would be nice to get another one. The Crypt King, snatching his eye from his hand, said that it was ready. The dialog boxes say, Congratulations, you have completed your premium order, Bright Delivery. Congratulations, you have completed an important order for Huanquin Express and have been promoted to HR Manager. Continue in the same spirit. Employee effect, you may resist the will of the manager to a certain extent. From now on, you can ignore the will of the Huanquin Express Manager. The reward for completing the final challenge has been increased by 200%. The main character pointed his finger at him with a smile and said, It's up to you, Crypt King. The Crypt King leapt to attack, his huge mouth wide open. Then Zio Huan turned around sharply. The man with blonde hair said to be careful. The guy with green hair said he was coming. Waving his hand, Lu Jia wished the Crypt King good luck. The Crypt King struck quickly with his claws. The red-haired girl gritted her teeth and said that this monster was too agile. She gave the command to Zhu Peng to shoot. Zhu Peng began to calmly leave. Turning around, she winked and with a smile told them to take care of him, and she should catch that guy. She wished them luck. Men Zio Huan jumped at her and swung his steel fist. He hit the ground with force, causing an explosion, and Zhu Peng was thrown aside. Kneeling on one knee, Zhu Peng coughed and said that he was indeed using a blue skill. Men Zio Huan, towering over her menacingly, told her not to bother him. Zhu Peng said that he seemed to care about this guy. Smiling, she said that he had piqued her curiosity. Instead, a straw scarecrow appeared on the ground. Men Zio Huan turned around and said that this is a prop, a straw man. The main character said that he always thought that Men Zio Huan was just getting close to him. A directory appeared in his hand, and he said that the initiative was always his. He tore a red page from the reference book. Delivery item, laughter, recipient, crying, delivery address, Huanquin subway station. Looking at the broken figurines, the manager said that the madman should have eaten him, but did not. He said that the task of the vigilantes was to kill him, but apparently there was an accident. Smoking a cigar, he said that it seemed like things often didn't go as planned in plays. The manager said it was necessary for the supervisor to threaten the store manager at the express station. There were puppet strings coming out of his fingers, and he said that as the writer of this drama, he didn't think it had to be like that. The Hungry Walker, Bride and Digger figurines were wrapped in green thread, and he said actors shouldn't deviate so much from their own roles. The figurines began to move, breaking the figurines standing next to them. Low level, Order 58 not completed. Low level, Order 31 not completed. Dark energy emanated from the fragments of the figurines. Inhaling dark energy, the manager said that, unfortunately, the level of an ordinary actor is not enough. Hearing a sound like a groan, he looked to the side. 
He said he seemed to be losing his patience. He told the creature behind the door not to worry because it would soon be free. He asked if he knew that the warden could exist in a cruel level area. He added that his body is capable of many things. Inhaling the smoke of the cigar, the manager said that he was now at the peak of the strong level, and when he took another step, he would be able to enter the area of the ferocious. Extending his hand to the table, he said that the fruit must be ripe enough so that when picked it will be sweet. Dropping the figurine with a snap of his finger, he said that until the order was fulfilled, he was forced to stay here. A guy with blonde hair and a girl with red hair were hanging on a dead tree, dissolving into pixels. The Crypt King said that now foolish travelers know his worth. Then Zio Hewan held the pixelated guy with green hair above the ground. The Crypt King said he was strong and he would remember him. His eyes turned red and he exclaimed sharply. Then Zio Hewan turned around and asked what was wrong with him. The Crypt King cursed, holding his head in his hands. Gritting his teeth, he spoke about delivery. He said that the terms of delivery say, if you don't get what you want, then the manager will take over. He said that he had been lonely for a long time, and last time he went to in case of death, please do not disturb, and then made a couple more orders. Kneeling down on one knee, Menzio Hewan said that his other order was with him. Sweating nervously, the Crypt King asked what he said. Menzio Hewan approached his face and said with a wide smile that he could help him. He sat on top of him and said that everything was fine and he could trust him. He kissed the Crypt King passionately. The Crypt King, his eyes wide, let out a short exclamation. He clenched his trembling paws. He closed his eyes and tears ran down his face. The dialogue box says, Congratulations, you have completed the premium order, delivering love. Congratulations, you have completed a high-level order and received the achievement excellent employee. Continue in the same spirit. The digger, surrounded by explosions, shot lasers from his eyes. The main character, standing around the corner, said that these monsters were completely crazy. Turning around, he asked why she followed him, and didn't she want to kill Men Zio Huan. Zhu Peng, who pinned him to the wall, said that he was right. Smiling, she said that she did not know how he was related to him, but she wanted to remind that all the players in the top 100 had long ago abandoned all moral principles. She said that Men Zio Huan is a real beast who has achieved incredible success, and he will do anything to pass the boundaries of levels. Lu Jia asked with a smile why she was telling him this. Zhu Peng ran her finger over his chest and said that she wanted to know what he was worth. Pixel silhouettes of people appeared on the stone square. The guy with green hair exclaimed that he was level 1 again. The guy with blonde hair said that he was also level 1. A girl with red hair asked in the chat if anyone was alive. Lee replied that he was dead. The guy who was with him said that he also died. Clenching her fists, the girl swore. The green hair guy said that Zhu Peng was still inside. He asked if she was okay. The girl, opening the interface, said that she needed to write to her. She wrote to her that they were all out and she needed to remember to complete the assignment. The message was not delivered because the user restricted who can send messages to him. The girl punched the blonde-haired guy and the green-haired guy exclaimed in shock. She said irritably that it looks like she blacklisted them to collect the reward. The guy with green hair said she was one of the top 100 players. The girl, gritting her teeth, said that these players never shunned anything to achieve their goal, and this must be explained to the old man. Lee and other guys in red sweatshirts ran towards them. He told the girl to look at what he wrote down. He said they came across a traveler with ultra-high-end equipment. He asks if it is possible that this is the traveler who has passed the ferocious level. The girl grinned and said that she didn't know whether it was him or not, but she couldn't miss this opportunity. She wrote to the president that they had made a big discovery during the Huanquin Express Strong Level Test. Strong Level Test, Huanquin Express. The main character and Zhu Peng fled through the destroyed city. She asked with a smile why he was running away, because she would not eat him. Lu Jia jumped over a deep fissure in the ground, and she said that in the worst case scenario, she would exchange it for money. She jumped over the rift after him and asked if he knew that the old man was looking for a guy who had passed the ferocious level, and the reward for his capture was two blue suits. The main character continued to run silently, and Zhu Peng asked if he might say something. She landed on the stone ground. Standing in front of him, she asked if he was the same guy. She said with a smile that his agility stats were much lower than hers, so he would not be able to escape. Lu Jia asked what she would do if he told her. Smiling widely and putting her hands behind her back, Zhu Peng said that she would have an interesting offer for him. Taking out a rifle, she asked if he was offering to kill him and receive a reward. The main character exclaimed in amazement, a sliding gun. 
Zhu Peng corrected it with a smile and said that it was a spell. Mechanism, Gunsmith. She cast a three-circle spell and a magic circle appeared in front of the barrel of her rifle. Three blue shots hit Lu Jia. Effect, the object's movement speed is significantly increased. Attack speed is increased by 20%. Effect duration, 10 minutes. The main character, surrounded by blue energy, exclaimed that this was a positive boost. Zhu Peng asked if he wanted to know why she wasn't trying to kill him. While reloading the rifle, she said that this was PV, and if it weren't for the old man and those fools, they would have fought shoulder to shoulder. She asked if they didn't look like faithful comrades who, hand in hand, break through the impenetrable darkness. The main character told her to tell the truth. Zhu Peng said that since he is one of the masters, they don't have enough money to pay. Turning around, she said that the point of this dungeon was that until they came across the warden, no matter how strong they were, they could not defeat the boss, and it just so happened that he was the warden, that's why he needed him. Turning around, she said, if you can't win, figure out a way to escape. Zhu Peng said that to pass the test, a perfect strategy is not the most important thing. Lu Jia said with a grin that he understood her. He opened the huge double doors. He raised his head and tears came from his eyes. There was something blue sitting in the middle of the room making crying sounds. The creature slowly turned around. It ran towards the main character, screaming loudly. There was blood coming from his eyes. The creature cried blood loudly, raising its head up. The main character asked him why he was crying. Squatting down, he told him to smile. He opened his eyes in amazement. Tears fell onto the floor. Lu Jia cried heavily, gritting his teeth, and he thought that he was not smiling. The creature extended its arms towards him from behind, and he thought that this guy's abilities were really strong. Grabbing him from behind, the creature shouted that it was in great pain. The main character opened his eyes, reddened from tears, in amazement. He lowered his hands, and the creature invited him to laugh together. It asked if he would show what was inside. Outside the window one could see the city, painted in the red tones of sunset. The creature asked if this was his inner world. It said it looked like a hospital and it looked like he had been through a lot of pain. Lu Jia, dressed in hospital clothes, stood in the room. The creature standing behind him asked what this pain was and what his fear was. The main character agreed, and the creature froze in place. He told him to look at himself. Lu Jia's head turned 180 degrees unnaturally, and instead of a face, he had a black hole. He asked if he didn't know. The creature asked in amazement if he was not human and why his painful memories were like this. Bowing his head unnaturally, Lu Jia asked what happened, because it was just a mixture of his bad memories. Darkness, in which sinister smiles were visible, surrounded them, and he told him to look further, and then he would see. Black monsters surrounded the creature, and the protagonist said that these were his painful memories. The creature stood fearfully, surrounded by black monsters with numerous mouths and eyes. The main character, standing in the center of a crowd of monsters, said that finally someone sees his pain. He asked him to accompany him. The creature screamed in fear. He fell from the back of the protagonist, who knelt down. Getting up, it began to run away, screaming in fear. Lu Jia tearfully told him not to run away because he was not finished yet. The creature swung open the double doors. It left the room and the doors slammed. Huddled in a corner, he covered his face with his hands, telling his mother that he was very scared and he had met a real monster. A crash was heard from the doors. The crying protagonist, holding huge scissors in his hand, asked why he ran away. The creature looked at him in fear in the corner and he asked if he had said that his pain was special. The creature shouted at him not to approach. The manager, holding a cigar in his hand, said that he liked tragedies. Looking at the figurines, he said that they reveal the beauty and taste of pain, and this taste remains in the memory forever. Pulling the green threads, he said that few people can smile in the face of crying, because he pulls out people's most painful memories, destroying the enemy. Frowning, he asked why he was scared and what he saw. The cry wiped away the bloody tears, throwing a doll to the main character, he shouted to him to leave. Lu Jia looked at the doll that had fallen to the floor. The doll lay next to his leg. The main character drew attention to it. He remembered a woman cradling something made from animals in her arms and going crazy over her lost daughter. He turned to the creature, which fell face down on the floor, wrapping its arms around it. Kneeling down on one knee, he asked if his previous name was Zio Zio. Weeping removed his hands from his face and repeated the name. Turning around, he said it sounded familiar. He asked if he knew his mother. Suddenly, weeping grabbed his head, crying out in pain. Lu Jia asked what happened. Crying said he had a bad headache. A green thread appeared from his back. The main character blocked the blow of the green thread with huge scissors. He dropped the scissors and fell onto the stone floor. Many green threads emerged from weeping's back and rushed towards him. 
Lu Jia dodged each thread with quick jumps and they hit the ground. He quickly ran out of the room. He stopped and turned around, breathing heavily. He said that he was glad that Chu Peng buffed him earlier, and he barely dodged the attack. The scissors were grabbed by green threads, and the main character said that it seemed like she was the victim of someone's dastardly plot. Someone behind me said that it was a good idea to save energy, because now it could not be more timely. The main character turned around. The manager said that he had been watching him for a long time. He asked if the scissors were his trump card. He said that he would prefer to keep such a dangerous weapon with him. Wiping away his tears, he apologized and said that he was quite close to him, so he was also susceptible to the effect of the ability. Lu Jia was surrounded by strange dolls, and the manager said that, however, as employees of Huanquin Express, they must be extremely polite to their customers. He asked if he agreed. Placing his hand on his face, the main character asked if he had personally come to check everything. He said it was very touching. The dolls brought a large throne behind the manager and he said that he became curious about it, so he decided to chat with his employee. A green spark appeared in his hand and he said that Lament was just a naive child and he hoped he didn't mind. The dolls placed the throne behind Lu Jia, and the manager told him to sit down. He asked if he would prefer to talk differently. The main character said that he was just wondering what he wanted. Sitting down on a chair, the manager said that a friendly atmosphere is a necessary condition for smooth work. Lu Jia said, he doesn't quite understand. He asked if he would explain. The manager asked what he thought was the most important thing in running a business. Raising his index finger, he said it was a demand. The doll brought him a cup of tea. Taking a cup of tea in his hand, he said that if there is a demand, one can succeed. But in order to strengthen it, one needs to make sure that there is a demand for his services, and this is the philosophy of his business. The manager said that Cry is a good kid that he raised and he helps him understand what his customers fear most in the world. Returning the empty cup to the doll, he said that, knowing their fears, he makes them come true. He said that, for example, some of them are most afraid of obesity. The hungry walker's stomach growled loudly. Shouting that he was hungry, he ran towards Zhu Peng. The manager said that this way the client will always want to lose weight. He said that some people are afraid of losing their beauty. The wind blew away the red cloth from the bride's face, revealing the withered face of a dead man with empty eye sockets. She asked who called her ugly. The manager said he made her look so scary. Pressing Men Zio Huan against the wall, the bride asked if he did it. The manager said that this way she would want to regain her beauty and improve her relationship. Sighing, Men Zio Huan said that he still hasn't found the second order and he doesn't want to go to the boss because it's too troublesome. The manager asked the main character if he knew what the worst was. Lu Jia said that it seems to be affecting him too. The manager said that, unfortunately, this is inevitable for all travelers, and it needs to be eliminated, but what is bad for them is experience points for them. He said that so did they. Travelers, they become stronger by completing a mission, but only he can let them fail the mission. The cry, tied with green threads, floated in the air nearby, surrounded by dolls. The manager said, for example, let Cry kill him, and that way he will get those same points and raise his level. Continuing to cry, he asked whether it was not profitable to run such a business. He said that, to be honest, he was curious about what was going on inside him if Cry was so scared. Braids appeared on the doll's hands, and Lu Jia said if he was really interested, he would tell. The manager, taking the gun in his hand, said that it was not a secret, and he was curious. Taking the pistol off the safety, he said that those who came from another world had a saying that he liked. Making Lament take the gun and point it at the main character, he said, the further into the forest, the more firewood. Pointing the gun at him, he said goodbye. A loud pistol shot sounded. The manager opened his eyes in shock. The bullet hit the NS3000 in the protagonist's hand. He said to let him say something too. He pressed a button on the game console. Enveloped in a whirlwind of wind, he told him never to think that his opponent only had one ace up his sleeve. The dialog box says, NS3000 game console. Effect. The item belongs to a player with some kind of physical disability. The player beat the final boss after many attempts. Such persistence is commendable. After use, you can call the owner of this item for help. The manager asked in amazement what it was. A gust of wind threw away all the dolls surrounding Lu Jia. Gritting his teeth, he said, Come out, you fierce creature. The dialog box says, Sorry, the person you are calling is disconnected or temporarily unavailable. Nothing happened, and the main character stood in an awkward pose in silence. He screamed in shock to tell him what he could do to him and asked him to help him. The manager, sweating nervously, said that he scared him. He ordered the dolls to attack. The army of dolls attacked Lu Jia. 
The doll behind him swung the scythe on her arm. The dolls around him were immediately hit on the head with force. One of the dolls flew past the manager. The doll fell into his chair with its arm torn off. The main character sighed and said that he thought that this girl gave him a fake. A pillow with four morning stars chained to it appeared above his head. Lu Jia smiled sadly and said that it was just a pillow. There was a note on the pillow, do not disturb during lunch break. The manager said it really surprised him and it looked like he'd have to deal with it himself. Slapping the pillow with his palm, the main character asked if it would take care of him. The pillow began to spin very quickly. The air swirled around the pillow. Many green threads flew out of the manager's hands. The pillow quickly flew towards him. The green threads were cut and the manager asked in amazement what was going on. The spinning pillow hit him in the face. Hitting him on the ground, the pillow dragged him along the floor. A cloud of dust and stone debris rose into the air. The threads that enveloped the lament fell apart. The scissors were also freed from the grip of the threads. Lu Jia took the huge scissors in his hand. Standing on the rubble, he said that this pillow was deadly. Equipment, eternal sleep, essential item, no attack power, purple quality. Special effect, lazy bed, allows the user to gain up to 90% damage reduction effect while sleeping. And HP and SP value increases by 5% per second. Special effect, bad mood after waking up, if necessary, you can throw a pillow at the person who is disturbing your sleep. Deal 7 hits of damage to creatures below ferocious level. Must be used within 24 hours. NS3000 disappeared, dissolving into pixels. The main character said that the fact that it disappeared is not surprising, because it is a disposable item. Putting the scissors on his shoulder, he said that it was worth it, because one issue had been resolved, and now it was time to deal with this guy. Cry sat behind the chair, burying his face in his hands. Behind Lu Jia, bunches of green threads appeared in the air. Green threads rushed to attack the main character, and he swung his scissors. He cut bundles of green threads with huge scissors. One of the bundles of green threads hit him in the face. The main character began to run away from the threads. Turning around, he asked if he was still alive. From the cocoon of green threads, the manager's voice was heard, who said that this was amazing and the blow he used had the destructive power of a natural disaster. The manager, who was made up of green threads inside, said that his words were absolutely true, but he still didn't have one trump card in his hand. Green threads rushed in different directions. The threads enveloped the hungry walker and he screamed. There were many green threads peeking out from his mouth. Zhu Peng said that something in him was about to explode. She asked if it could be the work of a newbie. The bride screamed and ran to attack Men Zio Huan. The threads grabbed her legs and she fell to the ground in front of him. Men Zio Huan turned towards the green threads coming from the building. Weeping looked fearfully at the threads approaching him. The manager said he was worth every second of his time, even though it was all for short-term gain. Dragging Lament towards him, he said that he could have refused to increase the level of danger, but he could not restrain himself. The main character, cutting the threads, asked if it was worth it. The manager said that he had deprived his business of many years of profit, and he should thank him properly for that. Someone jumped into the room through the window, holding a knife in his hand. A creature appeared in front of the manager, looking like a human-shaped piece of flesh with sparse black hair. Tied up with green threads, crying was right in front of the manager. The creature screamed loudly. It rushed to attack, swinging a knife. The manager said in slight amazement that the escaped puppet had returned. The creature approached between the green threads, screaming. It grabbed Weeping with its hand. Taking him from the manager, it cut the bonds that bound him. The creature tossed Lament aside. Green threads pierced the creature's body. The main character turned his attention to Weeping, who had fallen to the floor. He asked if the lady was crazy. He said that she clearly would not last long, and the order needed to be completed urgently. He cried, covering his face with his hands. Lu Jia called out to him and he turned around. Sitting down next to him, he asked that he had always wanted to know what a smile looked like. Running his hand over the blade, he told him to watch. The main character put the blade in his mouth, cutting his cheek. Crying looked fearfully at the dripping blood. Lu Jia, cutting his cheeks in the shape of a smile, said that this was the smile he so passionately wanted to see. The dialogue boxes say, Congratulations, you have completed your smile delivery order. Congratulations, you have completed an advanced order and become a Huanquin Express agent manager. The manager, wrapping the woman in threads, said that, in the end, anger had completely taken over this sad puppet. Grabbing her by the neck, he told her that her recklessness meant nothing to him. With a wave of his hand, he threw it aside. The woman hit the wall with force, leaving a dent in it. With his head down, the manager said that he was the manager of Huanquin Express. Straightening his hair, he said that as long as he was one, dealing with a creature of any cruelty would be a piece of cake. 
closing his eyes, he said that his only goal was a new batch of clients. Opening his eyes, he said that he was truly incredible, and now it was time for the others to get what they deserved. Spreading his arms to the sides, he flared with red energy and said to show what they were capable of. He said with a crazy smile, on behalf of the manager of Huanquin Express, a red error dialogue box appeared in front of him. At the moment, two managers are registered with Huanquin Express, it is temporarily impossible to contact the client. Please make sure that only one manager is authorized. The manager exclaimed that this was impossible. He asked who could smile at him. The main character, sitting on the throne, apologized, calling him a colleague. Above his head is written, acting store manager. Grinning, he asked if he might be interested in early retirement. Agent task manager, store manager is the highest position and from now on you can use store manager privileges. The reward for completing the final challenge has been increased by 400%. Since Huanquin Express currently has two managers, using the full package of privileges is temporarily impossible. Please make sure that only one manager is authorized. Turning to Lu Zhao, the manager said that he had underestimated him after all. Striking forward with the threads, he said that he seemed to have forgotten that his level was insignificant in comparison. He said that by killing him, he would again become the sole manager. The main character sat calmly on the throne with huge scissors in his hands. Smiling, he said that this was indeed true. A hungry walker fell through the ceiling into the room, and Lu Zha said that this should be agreed with the client. The hungry walker fell to the floor with force, crushing the green threads. The manager said with a grin that this level was not enough. A magic circle appeared next to the hungry walker's head and an orange beam shot at his head. Level 3 Technique, Berserk The veins on the hungry walker's body bulged, and he clenched his teeth. The threads of his figurine broke, and the manager exclaimed in amazement. The hungry walker clutched the bundle of green threads in his hands. He pulled the bundle of threads forcefully. Pulling the strings towards himself, he pulled the manager towards him. He hit the manager hard in the face with his hand. The manager flew aside. A huge orange beam flew through the building. Zhu Peng said it's not bad for a beginner. She suggested making friends. Lu Zha said that sounds good. The manager coughed and said, someone like him is resisting him. The bride grabbed him with her hands from behind. She said everything was fine before he showed up. The manager exclaimed that she dared to resist him. Without letting go, the bride said that it was for him. Then Zio Huan approached him with long, heavy steps. The main character asked that his real name is Men Zio Huan. Zhu Peng said that his forbidden move will definitely have an effect, and in terms of strength, this move is the most effective. Putting on her dark glasses, she told him to remember to close his eyes. Men Zio Huan put his hands on the manager's shoulders, and he asked fearfully what he was going to do. Men Zio Huan said with a smile that he has a special ability, strengthening any muscle in the body. And, accordingly, the more powerful the muscle, the more destructive its effect. Smiling widely, he told him to guess which human muscle is the strongest. The manager gritted his teeth in shock, guessing what he was talking about. Men Zio Huan activated a special skill, a magic language. Licking his lips, he said that he had never met a single guy who could stand it. Muscle technique plus three, your love for muscles has gone beyond the average person. The strength of a random muscle in your body has been greatly improved and has become your special weapon. The strength of this muscle will continue to increase. Your strengthened muscle, tongue. Your tongue is now a full-fledged weapon, dealing physical damage equal to 100% of your power with each lick. Plus 1 to tongue length, damage will be increased by 50%. Plus 2, each movement of the tongue reduces the opponent's speed by 10%, maximum use 3 times. Plus 3, penetration increases by 50%, and every third lick adds a paralyzing effect that lasts 2 seconds. The bride, blushing, said that his tongue was truly incredible. The manager asked me to wait in fear. Then Zio Huan gave him numerous attacks with his tongue. Zhu Peng said that nothing less could be expected from a high-ranking player, and it's just terrible. The main character stuck out his tongue in disgust. Then Zio Huan continued to give the manager dance-like tongue attacks. The main character, turning a blind eye to this, said that this scene frightens him too much. Zhu Peng said that although it looks quite stupid, every move he makes is a series of seven deadly cuts. Lu Zha asked what seven cuts are. She said that it is a technique that can knock out up to 70% of an opponent's HP and is often used as a finishing move. She said that activating it is far from easy, but once he does it, it is impossible to dodge it because the damage is simply terrifying. Zhu Peng said that what he is using now is a final move that can only be used once. Men Zio Huan lifted the manager by the hair and, sticking out his tongue, announced the final blow. 
he hit him with his tongue and the manager fell. Zhu Peng, covering her face with her hands, said that even considering that she can't stand elders, she definitely wouldn't want to become this guy's enemy, because if it comes to this trick, she'll be finished. The main task of Huanquan Express is completed. In a few minutes they will be returned to the testing site. Zhu Peng smiled and said that it was done. She told Lu Jia to be friends with her, and it was better not to mess with guys like that in the future. They touched the marks on their hands, and she thought that, compared to him, the newcomer was still very much nothing. Zhu Peng asked him what was on his face. Raising her head up, the main character said that he wanted to bring a happy smile to the child. Zhu Peng looked at him blankly. The woman was lying on the floor under the dent she had left in the wall. Weeping approached her and told her to get up. Taking her by the shoulder, he asked who she was and why she saved him. He asked if she knew his mother and if she could tell her where she was. The woman moved her hand. She put her hand on his face. Smiling, she said that she had grown up, and that was great. Weeping looked at her in amazement. The woman closed her eyes and began to cry. Zio Zio ran through the evening field of flowers. Her mother said with a smile that she had finally returned home. Zio Zio began to happily run towards her mother. They were joyfully reunited. The woman hugged her child and said that she had finally found him. Tears were streaming down Zhu Peng's face from under his dark glasses. Taking off her glasses, she said that she was very touched. She asked if deep down she was a sentimental person. Then Zio Huan told her not to dig a hole for herself because people who are close to him should not cry. Placing her hand on her chest, Zhu Peng asked who would have thought that she also had a feeling. She said that, however, the newcomer was unexpectedly strong. She suggested fighting locally next time. The system informed them that they would leave the test in five minutes. Men Zhao Huan suggested going and meeting in the main city. He thought that he should ask him about everything when they get out of here. The system has started counting down. The main character waved his hand and said goodbye with a smile. Zhu Peng and Men Zhao Huan around the main character disappeared, dissolving into pixels. Exhaling, he said that they had finally left. He told the manager that he had already left so he could stop pretending. The hungry walker exclaimed in amazement. The woman turned around and asked in amazement that he was still alive. The manager asked why he shouldn't leave since his mission was accomplished. Lu Jia said that he does not participate in this sad game to undergo some vile tests, and he is looking for at least some meaning in life. Smiling, he said that it so happened that he knew that there was someone else hiding behind the scenes, so he didn't want to detain them. The dialogue boxes say, Launch Secret Challenge, The Truth About Huanquin Express. Dear Acting Store Manager, Congratulations on completing your core mission and becoming the new Huanquin Express Store Manager. Now you can enjoy special privileges. You can refuse the position. Reveal the real truth about Huanquin Express. Please note that after accepting a secret mission, the rewards change. Please choose carefully. You have decided to accept the mission. You will not leave the training ground in 60 seconds. The manager said that it was really very different from the others. The doll lying on the throne apologized and asked to be allowed to ask why. The main character turned around and asked if he really knew him well. Rising from the throne, the doll said that he was too vain to die. Looking at him, it said that he believed that he had many trump cards up his sleeve, but this was not so, because it knew him well. It said that in order to activate the ability to charm an enemy, he needs to come into physical contact with him. Lu Jia looked at his palm and said that it was true. The doll said that he also has a weapon that can harm the ferocious creatures, but to do this they must attack first. The main character nodded again. The doll said that, most importantly, he can pass ferocious level trials, which speaks volumes about his strength, and it has been following him since the beginning of the trial. Lu Jia smiled, apologized and said that his tastes are varied, but a puppet is too much. The doll pointed an angry finger at him. Grinning, it said that his boneless tongue deprives him of his composure, and this is his standard technique. The hand suddenly pierced the puppet's head. The bride told the doll to stop talking. The main character stopped her and said that this was not a real body. The bride exclaimed in amazement. Lu Jia said that, like the manager, whose corpse lies nearby, and most likely, he is also just a puppet. The other puppet's eyes lit up and it said that he was really smart and it was no surprise that he was able to become the new store manager. Lu Jia said that he thought that this was the main body, because clues had already surfaced before. Looking at the yellow card, he said that he keeps changing the needs of customers, and in the end, greed will be his undoing. He said that he is the will of the customer, trying to increase demand and is ready to do anything for this. The puppets began to rise to their feet one by one. The hungry walker, rushing to attack the puppets, shouted that he would trample him. Finding that the puppet had grabbed his leg, he turned around in amazement. Grabbing the knife in her hand, the woman asked if the puppets were really getting stronger. 
The puppets rushed to attack, and one of them told the main character that, regardless of what kind of creature it is, its needs are like instincts. The bride smashed the puppet's head with a punch. The puppet said that in normal times they restrain themselves with the help of morality, law, and other boring things, and he simply released their needs, but he is different. The hungry walker tore the head of one of the puppets with his hands. The puppet said that he is quite desperate and reckless, and nothing can hold him back, so he is an ideal candidate for the role of the new manager. The woman cut the puppet in half with a knife, wrapping his arms around Lu Jia with green threads. The puppet said that he felt that he had an evil destiny so powerful that even he felt uneasy. He asked if he wanted to collaborate. The main character asked, so that I can become your puppet, like your predecessor. The puppet said that he is a time traveler who cannot use the power of his evil essence, but if he gives him his body, they will have no equal in the whole world. Turning around, Lu Jia asked with a smile who said that he did not know how to use his evil essence. Lightning flashed over the city. The guys ran away from the digger, calling for help. The guy with the sword asked how long they had to run away. The other guy said that he didn't know, because the order had not been completed yet, but the manager had not arrived yet. He turned around slowly, seeing the silhouette of a man in the sky. He asked in shock what it was. White hair fluttered in the wind. He was dressed in black clothes. The main character turned into a blue man with black horns and pointy ears. In his hand were huge scissors. The puppet exclaimed that he was a traveler and could not use this power, because he was not from this world. Lu Jia swung his huge scissors upward. Swinging the scissors, he calmly squinted. A huge purple beam of energy broke through the clouds and hit the ground. Somewhere in the hateful world, laziness was sleeping on the bed on a pillow with morning stars. Suddenly she frowned with displeasure. When she woke up, she asked if it was an insane level aura. The dialogue box says, Strong level, Huinquin Express Order Pickup Point. Among the city buildings there was a giant crater. The woman among the stone rubble was covering Zio Zio. She called out to her with a sad look. Holding her in her hands, she asked her to wake up. One of the stone fragments began to move. Picking up a stone fragment, the hungry walker said that he was still alive. The bride, lying under the rubble, said she really thought she was going to die. Looking at the giant crater, she asked if it was really the guy's doing. The hungry walker said that he seemed to have left. Someone asked what they were talking about. They turned around abruptly, asking who it was. Sloth floated in the air, sitting on a pillow. She told them to take the trouble to explain what happened here and try not to leave out any details. Some time later, while entering the blue portal, she said that it seemed like she was going to go to the human world, and Lu Jia decided to confuse her. The bride exhaled. The hungry walker said they were lucky to survive. The woman called out to Lenya, and she turned around. The woman ran up to her, holding a child in her arms. Falling to her knees, she asked to be saved. Hitting her head on the ground, she begged her, saying that she would pay any price. Laziness said that the basis of this child's existence is resentment, and he feeds on it. Looking at the child lying on the ground, she said that now the source supporting this nutrition was no longer there, so he too would now disappear. The woman desperately fell to the ground. Lenny was silent for a while. She began to speak and the woman raised her head. A blue object appeared in her hands. Name, Green Lantern, Quality, Blue, Artifact, Effect, The Lantern is able to absorb the power of the soul. The user can use it to absorb someone else's soul. Entering the portal, Sloth said that since she no longer wanted to use it for her own existence, all memories would be erased anyway. The portal disappeared, and she added that she must understand the cost of her sacrifice, and she needs to do everything on her own. The woman was sitting with a lantern in her hands. After crying, she smiled. A lantern, shrouded in blue particles, lay in the child's arms. The woman, having returned to her previous form, told Zio Zio that she would tell her a story. She said that a long time ago there lived a girl who was a real crybaby, and more than anything in the world she loved to cry. After becoming transparent, she raised her head and said that one day she got a doll, and they became best friends. Pressing her face to Zio Zio, she said that from then on, no matter what happened to her, she always told her doll about it. A drop fell on Zio Zio's face, and the woman said that then the crybaby stopped crying, and then she grew up. Zio Zio slowly opened her head. Rising up, she rubbed her eyes with her hands. Getting to her feet, she looked around and asked where she was. Seeing something, she stopped. Zio Zio exclaimed happily. Beneath the huge delivery point sign, a doll that looked like her mother lay on the ground. The main character appeared in a hospital room, shrouded in blue pixels. Standing up he asked what happened. He said that after killing the guy, he immediately received notification that the mission was complete. 
the dialog boxes say, Congratulations on completing the Strom Level Dungeon Huanquin Express. Main mission completed, hidden mission completed, overall rating, excellent. Warning, anomalous activity detected. Communication with the other world will be interrupted after three seconds. Lu Jia asked how he managed to pass out immediately after the transition and not even see the reward. There was a knock on his door. Suddenly the sound turned into a deafening roar. The main character asked who could be banging on the door like that, since he was in the hospital. Two huge monsters entered his chamber. Lu Jia grimaced and asked if he was crazy. He said it was strange and apparently the medicine he was taking had not yet worn off. Rising from the bed, he said since it was just an illusion, he would not react to it. The monster struck sharply with its long tongue. The main character frowned sharply. Crouching, he quickly dodged the attack. Touching the wound on his cheek with his finger, he said that it hurt. He asked if the monsters were real. Two nurses stood in front of him with worried expressions on their faces. Lu Jia looked at them and they asked what happened and if he was feeling bad. The nurse with blonde hair noticed that he was silent. Another nurse asked if he was crazy. Reaching out her hand to him, she asked if he was okay. The main character continues to see them as two monsters. Gritting his teeth, he asked if they were hallucinating and if he should kill them. The monsters began to approach him. Lu Jia jumped over them in one deft leap. He ran into the hallway and the nurses called out to him. The nurse told another nurse to quickly report this to the duty room, and Lu Jia seemed to be feeling unwell again. The main character quickly turned the corner. He found a tentacled monster with a huge red eye filling the corridor in front of him. The tentacle pierced his leg. Lu Jia staggered and blood gushed out from his leg. Pressed against the wall, he said that the pain and sensations were very real, and there was no way out. He opened his inventory and the system asked if he should call for help from the ferocious ripper. A hospital employee radioed that the patient had been found. The man on the radio asked what his condition was. The man said he got scared when he saw him, slipped and fell, no serious injuries. Approaching Lu Jia, he asked him to calm down and said that he would take him to the treatment room. The main character suddenly began to run away, and the man asked him to stop. Lu Jia jumped out of the window with a sharp jump. A child at the orphanage asked if Lee was leaving again. The girl with blonde hair, how long will he last, and can he not leave? Lee said with a smile that he was saying that he had found a place where he could make good money, and he would become rich and come back right away. Squatting down, he patted the girl on the head and told them to behave and wait for him. A boy with a shaved head, pointing his finger to the side, told him that there was someone there. The main character approached them, having difficulty keeping his balance. The child asked him why he was in hospital pajamas and if he was sick. He asked why not go to the hospital. Lu Jia's turned black and he told them to die with an evil smile. Jin Dali, gritting his teeth, shouted to be careful. The main character sharply swung his huge scissors. He hit the stone steps with the scissors. Jin Dali and the children teleported a few meters away from him. Holding the scroll in his hands, he said that he had time. He told the children to run away immediately. Magic scroll, harmful teleportation, quality, green, artifact, effect. Using this artifact, you can forcibly teleport the target of your choice to any point within 30 meters. The children ran away, turning the corner. The girl turned around and asked Jin Dali what about him. He smiled and gave her a thumbs up and told her not to worry because he was very strong. The main character, surrounded by an ominous aura, was approaching him. Jin Dali, sweating nervously, said that he was finished. He looked at the huge scissors that the main character was swinging. He fell to his knees. Putting his hands in front of him, he told him to stop, because it was him, Jin Dali. Lu Jia told him to run. Holding his face with his hand, he told him to run away because he couldn't help himself. Jin Dali shouted something back. The main character widened his eyes in amazement. He quickly swung the scissors, shooting out waves of dark energy. Jin Dali, running away, called for help. The children called out to him in fear. The wave of energy spread in two directions without touching him. Jin Dali covered his face with his hands from the strong wind. He opened one eye, noticing a horn silhouette in a cloud of dust. He asked if it was another monster. Sloth said that he not only withstood the effects of insane levels of power, but was also able to clear his mind for a second. She said that he was definitely not an ordinary person. She said she shouldn't have expected anything less from the guy she had plans for. Blue energy flashed at the tip of her finger, and she said with a smile that it was not in vain that she gave him the tracking demon. Pulses of cold energy spread around her. Suddenly snow began to fall from the sky. The children looked up in amazement, noticing the snow. Suddenly they wanted to sleep. The children fell asleep right on the cold asphalt. The main character, down on one knee, asked Lenny if this was her doing. Lenny apologized and said that she did not want to set him up. She said with a smile that she never expected that he would actually be able to awaken his true power. 
Lu Zha's eyes darkened and he said that he was waiting for her. He asked her to explain what was happening. Lenya, smiling, said that she would tell everything. Raising her head, she said that he had caused quite a commotion. There was a huge magic circle above them, and she said that, first, we need to figure everything out. Looking at the sleeping children, Jin Dali said, incredible abilities. Looking at Lenya, he said, a high-ranking demoness from another world. Looking at the giant magic circle, he said, all these special effects look like someone's prank. Rolling his eyes, he laughed and said that it seemed like he was in another world. A man in black clothes, with his hands clasped behind his back, standing behind him, apologized for disturbing him. Jin Dali turned around, but the man turned around. Rubbing the back of his head, he asked how this man ended up here. The man approached Lenny and, bowing, said that the queen had decided to visit this world. He asked if he could find out why. Laziness said that they, the night guards, are very boring people and cast the same boring spells every time. The man coughed, apologized and said that, according to the agreement, she could not appear in the human world without permission. Lanya, grinning evilly, asked what he should do since she was here. The man said he was joking. He asked if he, an ordinary demon, could be equal to the powers of her majesty. Frowning his brows, he said that if she really had come to invade the mortal world, he would fight. He said that even if she used this body, he would not be able to defeat her. Lenya turned around, frowned and said that they, the night guards, were real suicides. Pointing her finger down, she said that she was not interested in fighting with them and she was here because of this guy. The main character was lying on the ground unconscious. The night guard asked if she was joking, since this traveler was still at the beginner level. He said that he would hardly be able to use artifacts from other worlds. He asked how he might be different from other recruits. Jin Dali asked if he was talking about him. Lenya, grinning, said that the fact that he never saw his essence was strange. The man approached Lu Zha questioningly. He placed two fingers on his forehead, which began to sparkle. The night guard exclaimed in amazement. He asked the others what they were doing. He shouted to them to come here immediately. People from the rooftops instantly disappeared. The blue barrier dissipated. One of the night guards said that it is a living source of evil. He asked how this was possible. Another night guard said it was something new and his eyelids trembled. Turning to Lenny, the night guard asked who he was. Sloth, twirling her hair with her finger, said that he managed to awaken the power of true evil in the battle and gain strength at an insane level, and this caused a lot of trouble. The night guards exclaimed in shock and said that she must be joking. The man asked if her words were true. Having created a large portal, Sloth said that if they do not believe her, she will take it away. She told them not to worry because she would not return to this world. Placing Lu Zha on their shoulders, the night guard said that he belonged to this world, and she could not collect him so easily. Laziness raised an eyebrow in confusion. The night guard said that if she took him away, he would be very angry. Lenya smiled. She asked if he could hold it. She asked if they knew what would happen to the person who awakened the source of true evil. The night guard took the cloth covering his face. Revealing his face, he said that people manage to give birth to a living source of true evil, and even if it costs them their lives, they, the night guards, will definitely protect it. Laziness shrugged and said that she would leave it with them for now. The night guards breathed a sigh of relief and she said that she had something to say. With a wink, she said that they should hurry because open testing was about to begin. The night guard asked why so quickly. He said that people would hardly be able to cope with a brutal level of testing. Laziness said, Siming. The man looked at her in amazement. Lenya said that previously the night guards were in charge of Ursa Minor. She asked how many stars were left in it. She asked if all the stars went out, would there be any point in testing? The night guard, looking down, said, he knows. He asked her to leave the human world. Laziness told him not to worry, because she was already leaving. She brushed the hair from the protagonist's forehead with a smile. She kissed his forehead, which glowed slightly blue. The man, blushing slightly, asked what she was doing. Turning around, Sloth said that she would grant a strengthening that would protect his consciousness. She asked if there were any problems. The man coughed and said no. She disappeared through the portal. One of the night guards asked if this enhancement was transmitted through the mouth. The man told him to shut up and not talk about things he shouldn't talk about. Jin Dali, peeking around the corner, said that everything seemed to be fine. Gritting his teeth, he said that he thought that Lu Zha wanted to hit him, but did not expect that he was ready to kill him. He said he was wrong again. Recalling how the main character cupped his face with his palm, he said that he didn't think it was done intentionally. Jin Dali said that he doesn't know what happened to him. Someone called out to him from behind. Seeing one of the night guards, he cried out in fear, asking who he was. The night guard said that he didn't want to scare him, and he could call him Ikshuen. Smiling, he asked if he was also one of the travelers in that game, 
and if he wanted to become stronger. He said that he could help with this, but, of course, not for free. Jin Dolly, covering his face with his hands, said that he was invisible. He asked him to pretend he didn't see him. Pointing two fingers at him, Yixuan said no. He asked if he had heard that testing was about to happen. He said he wouldn't last three rounds. Ikshuan dragged him along the ground by his pants, ignoring his resistance. In a multi-story building, the lights were turned on in several windows. There were several wanted posters crossed out on the board. Ju Peng sat on a chair with her leg up on the table. Furrowing her brows, she asked if this guy was going to answer her messages. In the message, she asked why he was not in town, since they had already left. She asked if he had decided to deceive her. Ju Peng said that next time she would kill him for a good reward. Her phone rang. Picking up the phone, Zhu Peng asked, Rogue. The interlocutor asked loudly how she talked to her uncle. Leaning towards the board, Zhu Peng asked if the night watch had broken up yet. She said that if he had no other questions, she would hang up. He said he had an urgent task for her. Zhu Peng said she was busy. The interlocutor said that the reward was huge. Twirling a marker in her hand, Zhu Peng said that she now realized that she could not help her beloved uncle, and she had to somehow express her love and respect to him. Sacred Heart Hospital. The boy woke up in bed. The man in the white coat asked if he was awake. Adjusting his glasses, he said that he was a doctor. He asked if he remembered that he had been here once before. The man closed his eyes and nodded. Smiling, the doctor said that he was safe here. He left the room, and someone through the system asked if there was a result. The doctor said no, and the other party has the ability to erase memories, so they are one step behind, but there is no need to worry. He asked to tell the elder that he would continue monitoring the source. Armies of angels and demons fought under red skies. Dragons flew in the sky while monsters fought with angels and people on the rocks. Two angels in golden armor said that there were too many of them and the devil must be killed. A devil with bluish skin and white hair sat on a stone throne. He raised his palm and it flashed red. Darkness surrounded him. Getting to his feet, he said that he was the true source of evil. Colorful pillars of light rose into the sky and he said that he had sent the seven deadly sins to other worlds. Blue energy rushed upward from the rock behind him, and the devil said that he would grant them heavenly punishment. A beam of blue energy hit the ground and someone shouted for Lu Zha to wake up. Opening his eyes, the main character saw his palms stretched out to the cloudy sky. Rising to his feet, he looked at his palms. Looking up, he saw a huge magic circle, and someone said that, According to the order, a seal was being formed that would chain the demon. People in black clothes floating in the air shouted, Victim. The main character found himself sitting on a stone throne. Someone said that this is a fragment of the memories of those who once awakened within themselves the source of true evil. Lu Zha asked, Laziness. Laziness said that she could not stay in a human body for a long time, so she left a part of her consciousness there in a spiritual form. And now in each of his dreams there will be memories of previous victims about certain events. The main character asked what the situation in the world was. Pointing to the screen with Zhu Peng, she told him to look for himself. Seeing Lu Zha chained up, Zhu Peng asked if this was a joke. She asked the man if he was sure that he was not crazy and if he had dementia. Lowering his head, the man said that it was very disrespectful, but it didn't matter. He asked if she had heard that the source had awakened. Zhu Peng grinned and said that she had heard about it but did not know that it was he who did it. She asked what happened to the blonde and who he was. Jin Dolly, holding his head in his hands, thought, these seem to be quite close, and should they be familiar? He wondered if he should even get involved in this. Smiling widely, he grinned mockingly and asked if he hadn't introduced them. Pointing the gun at Lu Jia, Zhu Peng said that it was not important and she didn't remember him. She fired the pistol. The man moved so quickly that it didn't look like he was moving. Zhu Peng said, there is no need to poke your nose into other people's affairs. The man grinned and said that she could not kill him. He held the bullet she had just fired behind his back with two fingers. Biting his t-shirt, Jin Dolly panicked and thought about who these people were. Zhu Peng asked with a poisonous smile if he had forgotten how her master died. The man said that Tsai Lu and Shang Shen gave their lives in the fight against the previous awakened source of evil many years ago. After firing a bullet from his hand, he said that Yan Shu never recovered from the serious injuries he received back then. Zhu Peng, sitting on a chair, said that she was glad that he remembered. She told him to tell him why he wanted to protect him. Taking a bite of the apple, she said that the troops had been disbanded, there was discord between the elders, but they continued to worship the awakened source. Jin Dali asked to be allowed to speak. She turned in his direction. Raising his palm, he asked about Lu Jia being different from the previous one. He asked why they should kill him. Zhu Peng said because Lu Jia awakened the source, and 90% of those who awaken still die. 
she said that the source absorbs the remaining 10% and the person loses his former essence, turning into a monster who is only capable of killing. Remembering the rampaging Lu Jia, Jin Dali understood why he was like this. The man, with his hands clasped behind his back, said that, therefore, if anyone here decides that he is worthy of possessing the source, he must be killed immediately. He said that the root of all evil is the lord of evil, and it is like a curse that cannot be lifted or resisted. Nobody knows how and when it appeared, who was the first damned. It is only known that those who awakened him will either die, going crazy, or the curse will consume their soul turning them into real monsters. Xu Peng turned to Jin Dali and asked what he would do in her place when faced with such evil. Jin Dali hesitated to answer. The main character said with a smile that this was nonsense, and, of course, you need to get rid of the problem right away, like a weed, and then it won't grow. Lenya, looking at him, asked if he himself agreed with this. The man turned to Xu Peng and said that she knows that humans by nature have a hard time competing with beings from other worlds. He said that for humans, the ferocious level is usually the limit. That's why before, when they faced them, they lost. However, the source of evil changed everything. The man remembered how he crawled on the ground, gritting his teeth. He said that it first appeared when aliens invaded them from other worlds and they were on the verge of failure. He said that he not only completed the brutal level, but also turned the tide of the battle single-handedly. In the end, both sides decided that there was no point in resolving conflicts through clashes. Since then, the source of evil has been used to bring victory or defeat in decisive battles. Zhu Peng raised an eyebrow and said that the master never told her about this. She asked if it was true. The man said that at that time it was a big unspoken secret that only a few people knew about. In addition, Later the consciousness of the source of evil was absorbed, which led to a great disaster, and he cannot even talk about it. Rubbing her chin, Zhu Peng said, it turns out that everything is not so meaningless. The man asked what was not pointless. Zhu Peng said that she just thought that with his usual way of talking nonsense, it would be something stupid again. Looking to the side, she said, it turns out that back then there were still people capable of feats. The man angrily asked what she was saying. He said that, in general, Lu Jia needs to be saved, even if he becomes a monster in the future, and they will deal with it later. Jin Dali said that there is really no need to worry too much. They looked in his direction, scratching the back of his head. He said that he had now heard so much that he no longer understood anything. Smiling awkwardly, he said that at least he definitely saw Lu Jia in a fit of madness. Remembering laziness, he said that if it were not for his kind soul, he would not have lived to see them appear. Smiling nervously, Jin Dali said that he thought that Lu Jia might not be absorbed. The man asked if he was saying that he was able to awaken from his state of insanity on his own. Jin Dali said yes. Frowning, the man said that this was impossible, and none of those who awakened the source of true evil were capable of such a thing. Jin Dali said offendedly that they could ask Lenny about it because she saw it too. The man said that, in any case, they needed to wake him up as soon as possible. The ring on his finger flashed yellow. Something glowed yellow in Jin Dali's hands, and the man said it was for him. In his hands was a small piece of paper. Amulet of Fate Substitution, Blue Artifact. Effect, you can use this item to evade the test. Using it, you can officially refuse any task. Jin Dali exclaimed that this thing is really worthwhile. The man said that in his opinion, the only thing that could heal this guy was to constantly increase his spiritual power, and this would compensate for the negative energy. He said that if the owner of the source of evil decides to voluntarily take part in the game, it will be a brutal level, and he should go with it to lower the difficulty, but he doesn't know if he can do it. Jin Dali exclaimed in fear. The man said if he helps, this item will immediately belong to him. Jin Dali rubbed his shoulder hesitantly, and the man said that later they could take the test together. Jin Dali asked after he entered if she would protect him. The man said yes. Jin Dali asked if he could leave if he couldn't stand it anymore. The man, closing his eyes in irritation, said yes. Before he could finish speaking, Yisuin hit him on the back of the head. He said irritably that he had given him so many auxiliary artifacts that if he was killed even with this, it would definitely be deserved. Jin Dali said that it was simply his first time entering a test of such difficulty, so he was nervous. The dialogue box says, Please note that in 10 seconds you will enter the trial zone. Please get ready. Rubbing the back of his head, Jin Dali said that Yisuin gave him so much, but Zhu Peng has nothing at all. He asked where they found such a brave man who does not ask for anything in return. Zhu Peng's phone received a notification that 1 million yuan had been credited to her account. The man, adjusting his glasses, said that he had transferred the reward to her. Jin Dali opened his mouth in shock. He asked why she was given so much money, and what about him. 
they disappeared from the room, leaving behind only fading blue pixels. Ik Shuan laughed and said that he was very young and energetic. The man asked that he must value them very much. Smiling, he said that he remembers how he himself wanted to look at the artifacts that he gave him, but he did not allow it. Yi Suan chuckled and said that this fool would still die, but Zhu Peng should at least cope. Throwing up his hands, he said that, as he once said, it would be sad if he left nothing behind when he died. The man said that this child is weak, and even if they start training right now, there is not enough time. Ik Shuan said that he and he are similar in some ways. Smiling widely, he said he was looking forward to seeing what he would grow into. The dialogue boxes say, Travelers Lu Jia, Jin Dali and Zhu Peng begin the competition in trial multiplayer mode. Difficulty. Hard level. Strong level challenge. Reward. Blue treasure chests. Please note that dying in this challenge will remove your level, skills and items. Connection completed. Number of participants. 4. Level cage of disaster loaded. Good game. Mission goal. Pet the cat. Jin Dolly asked in amazement. Pet the cat. In front of him was a gigantic beast, like a lion, baring its teeth. Growling, the monster waved its huge paws. Jin Dolly began to run away and call for help. Pressed against the wall, he looked up in fear. Pressing his back against the wall, he clenched his teeth and said that he was finished. He accidentally pressed the red button on the wall. Jin Dolly looked at the button. The dialogue box says, Object 57, Spirit Cat, Evil Level, 500, Danger Level, Medium. Conditions of Detention The Spirit Cat must be locked in a cage alone and periodically calmed down. To do this, the researcher needs to relax as much as possible and leave when the Sivet's condition becomes stable. Note, Subject 57 is a black, obedient kitten, but exhibits symptoms of possession from time to time. If at this moment there is any intelligent creature within 10 meters, he corners them and tries to kill them. However, if the target handles the subject carefully, like a pet, it will not be difficult to calm it down. Gritting his teeth, Jin Dolly asked where Lu Jia and Zhu Peng were. Holding a gun in her hand, Zhu Peng asked, Is the monster so strong from the start? She said the challenge seemed happy to see her. Object 13, Red Fish, Evil Level, 480, Danger Level, Strong. Conditions, Closed Cage of Good Quality. Feed must be given daily at 8 and 20. In addition, there should be no arc-shaped objects nearby, objects close to circles, cylinders, semicircles, and so on. Note, Object 13 looks like a huge red fish monster, has an almost fanatical desire to eat a meatball. As long as something is spherical and its size matches the size of the object's mouth, it will be absorbed regardless of the hardness of the material. The monster's eyes became bloodshot. Zhu Peng covered her chest with her hand and asked displeasedly, seriously. Opening its huge mouth, the fish rushed to attack. There was a small screen next to the iron door. On the screen with Lu Jia's photo it was written, Object 1, Nameless Object, Level of Evil, Unknown, Preventive Measures, Unknown. Note, the subject appears to be a male human with relatively strong mental abilities and the ability to communicate. He damaged a total of six pieces of equipment, including the newest 99,999 Evil Limit Detection Detector. At present, a method for neutralizing it has not been discovered. On the screen was Lu Jia who waved his hand at the camera and asked if anyone was there. Smiling, he said that he had finally woken up and offered to talk. Raising his head up, the main character asked that no one had come. Closing his eyes, he said that it seemed like the other party didn't want to talk to him, but someone must be watching. Completing the main task, escaping from the disaster association. Reward, Blue Treasure Chest. Lu Jia, noticing the name of the association, said that he had already heard about it somewhere. He remembered the manager saying that he didn't expect that what he used in preparation would be useful here, and Lu Jia did a great job. Smirking, he said that it seemed that even he was afraid of the association, but he shouldn't be underestimated either. The dialogue box says, the system detected an abnormal output last time. Rewards will be taken into account, the reward will be calculated in full. Lu Jia exclaimed in amazement. The dialogue boxes say, you have been promoted to a store manager using the duties. The reward has been increased by 400%. You have solved the truth about Huanquin Express. The reward has been increased by 200%. You have conquered Huanquin Express. The reward has been increased by 500%. Your final reward ratio is 120%. Final reward, 2000 points. Reward, one purple treasure chest, two blue treasure chests. The reward for fixing the mess in the trial system is 3 health points. Due to the increase in level to level 5, your source of evil is strengthened to plus 1. All attributes are improved. Due to Huanquin Express going bankrupt, the title was obtained, favorable. 
the system wished him a pleasant game with a grin. The main character irritably asked if they were thinking of laughing at him with the last line. He demanded an apology, frowning. He said that, for the sake of generous rewards, he would turn a blind eye to it. His status window reads, Strength, 2, Attack Power, Extremely Weak, Agility, 2, Constitution, 10, Perception, 2, Spirit, 17, Defense, Normal, Mental Resistance, Normal, Perception, Low, Speed, Clumsy, Rating Powers, Average, Mechanism, Source of Evil, Plus 1. Lu Zha said that it looks like he needs to pay more attention to physical training. Mechanism, Source of Evil plus 1. Walking Effect, Light, Active Ability, Touch of Evil, Passive Ability, Suggestion. Plus 1 Enhanced Effect, Leader. Absorb 23% SP, Cooldown, 10 minutes. You're one step closer to the Scoundrel of Legend. Now you are ready to meet the true head of evil. Thanks to your power, you can summon creatures that will become your minions and die for you. They are a projection of the main body, so their strength will be limited by yours. After death, a creature cannot be summoned again. Note, I know who you want to call, but first think about whether you are worthy. Smiling nervously, Lu Jia asked if today's note was too obvious. Seeing the inscription above his head, he read the description of his title. Effect, the target attacking you has a certain chance of receiving the curse status. Note, auspicious royal rabbit, you are safe. The steel door clicked open. Two armed men in black armor appeared in the doorway. One of them asked Lu Jia to help them with an experiment. The main character smiled, apologized and asked what kind of experiment it was. Pushing him, the guard told him not to do anything stupid. Shaking himself off, Lu Zha said that they should treat him with great trepidation. The guard irritably asked if he was fragile. Another guard told him to shut up and not talk to people like him. The guard obeyed. They took him out of the detention cell. The hallway was filled with large screens surrounded by people in lab coats. On one of the screens, a man with black hair grabbed his teeth into the neck of a guy who was asking to be released. The scientist said that experiment number 7 failed. He gave the command to move on to the next one. Another scientist asked if there was a record of the decomposition serum being administered to the test subject, because there was no time to delay. The man with the bald head on the screen was lying on the floor. The scientist said that the report on Project 97 had arrived, and after four murders, the evil indicator had increased slightly. Smirking, Lu Zha looked around and said that this is quite original. Security guards were running down the hallway, saying that Subject 3, Cleft Lip, seemed to be going crazy and calling for staff to come immediately. The guard repeated it again, and the main character asked about the hair lip. The guard, pushing him with a gun, told him not to stop and go. Lu Zha laughed and obeyed. He touched his palm to the blue screen. The door opened in front of them and the guard told him to come in. He whispered to him to just press the button inside. The main character thanked him with a smile. He was holding a device with a button in his hand. Remote control, quality, green, effect, using the latest type of signal, invisible to most types of security devices, you can detonate the device with one click. The guard told the other, calling him Judas, to go to Dr. Mimir to protect her and he would go to the cleft lip. Judas, raising his palm, obeyed. The security guard said that he was his confidant, and he was confident that he would cope. Judas said with a smile that he could trust him. The steel door behind Lu Zha closed. Smiling, he said that the guy seemed to be trustworthy. A voice announced that the experiment was about to begin. The main character turned around. There was a centipede in the blue cube. Lu Zha asked if anyone would tell him what this experiment was. A hologram of a girl with glasses appeared in front of him. She said that she was Dr. Mimir, the curator of his experiment, and she would tell him what its essence was. Mimir said that this is Project 32, a brain snake that is able to enter the bodies of other organisms through the mouth and parasitize their brains. The blue cube began to disappear and she said that once infiltrated, the object was using a foreign body as a mother body to absorb its best genes and produce better offspring. She added that the subject is extremely picky about food, and the more developed the brain, the more interesting it is, and stupid people do not bother him. Mimir said with a smile that they wanted to see if it was possible to potentially produce large numbers of offspring with extremely advanced evil abilities, and he was obviously the most suitable material for this. With her hand on her hip, she thanked him for his cooperation on behalf of the Disaster Association. Hearing a knock on the door, she turned around. Judas said that the task she gave him was completed. Mimir said that he was just in time. She asked what was wrong with Subject 3. Judas said that the detention team miscalculated the subject's mental power, which is why he woke up early. Mimir, folding her arms across her chest, said that an important experiment was at stake now, because she should not be disturbed. Judas stood behind her, hiding a knife behind his back. 
Mimir said with a smile that she had one more question. Judas, gritting his teeth, said that he was listening. Judas swung his knife, and Mimir asked how Judas died. Three guards pointed their guns at him, standing behind him, ordering him not to move and to raise his hands. Throwing the knife on the floor and raising his hands, Judas asked with a smile how she knew. Mimir, sitting on a chair, said that each of the staff members, entering her office, says a special code that only this person and she know about. She said the Judas code is SJB3960. She asked what he administered to subject number three other than the awakening injection. Smiling, Judas said that they found out about this too. An explosion occurred on the screen. The voice informed Mimir that there was a lot of explosives in the room of object number one, and he had just gotten out. Raising his index finger, Judas said this. Mimir said she understood. She asked if he could tell him his name. Taking a graceful pose, he said that she could call him Nin Feng. The guards immediately opened fire on him. Nin Feng fell to the floor. Mimir said to notify all departments about the incident and submit a petition for payment of benefits to Judah's family. The guard with the beard asked what about subject number one and whether to arrest him. Adjusting her glasses, Mimir said no with a smile, because now the real experiment would begin. She ordered all exits to be closed and departments to prepare to record. The guard with the goatee asked, seriously. Mimir said that object one is apparently a time traveler. She asked why its meaning of evil was greater than theirs. She said that if they could study it, it would be a big breakthrough for their world. The guard said that there were still many of their employees in the detention center. Mimir asked what the purpose of the disaster association was. The guard, putting his fist to his chest, said, I am the truth. All the guards did the same, and, kneeling down and bowing, said, Truth lives forever. The dialog boxes say, Traveler, please note that in this challenge you have been assigned a special status, Inner Ghost. You will enter the trial before other participants, so there will be a certain amount of time for you to take measures that will help your comrades escape from the disaster association. Thanks to your special skill, you will not be punished immediately after dying in this test, but will enter spectator mode. If your teammates complete the challenge, your death will not be counted and you will be able to receive a reward. If they fail and do not complete the main quest, you will be punished by death. Nin Feng, top 10 best traveler ability, the curator scratched his head and said that he was too careless. Looking at Judas's corpse, he said that he originally planned to clear the boss himself, but it seems that the boss of this dungeon belongs to an incredibly strong person, so he had to replay everything. Looking at the three holographic screens, he said that, fortunately, his abilities are not affected by death, and he can think things through on his own. Nin Feng decided to look at his new comrades. Looking at Jin Dali running away from the monster, he said that he was a weakling. Looking at Zhu Peng, he said that this girl is quite good, but she is too reserved considering her size. Looking at the steel door surrounded by smoke, he said that this guy did not deserve his status. Nin Feng raised his eyebrows in surprise. Lu Jia, standing on all fours, caught the centipede with his hands and said with a grin that he had caught it. Nin Feng asked why he didn't take the chance to escape, and whether he came here to have fun and catch bugs, because the guards were about to come. Squeezing the centipede in his hands, the main character expressed himself using obscene language, blocked by the system. Nin Feng looked at the screen in amazement. Lu Jia continued to talk vulgarly about how he was an idiot who had been unable to get out of here for 18 nights. The dialogue box says, launch using secret word, success. The insect began to quickly shake its head, and the main character, laughing, said that he could no longer stand it. Nin Feng, clutching his head, asked what was happening and if he had problems with his head. Lu Jia smiled and told the insect that he had been told that he couldn't stand stupid people. He told him not to deny it, because they were here for a long time. Raising the insect above his head, he opened his mouth and stuck out his tongue. The insect squeaked as it approached his mouth. The main character put it in his mouth. He swallowed an insect and it squeaked from inside his body. Nin Feng shouted in shock that he was crazy. He asked where this crazy person came from, and if the system couldn't find someone normal. Lu Jia exhaled, placing his hand on his stomach. The dialogue boxes say, you get status, parasite, you get weapons, four tentacles. You gain the abilities, squeeze, grab, throw, intimidate. All attributes have been improved. Lu Jia looked ahead seriously. Red tentacles tore his clothes on his back. Four large red tentacles burst out from his back. The system reported that he controls his actions through a brain parasite. The dialogue box says, due to the high resilience of your brain, the worm refuses to control you. Nin Feng asked in shock if this was even normal. The guards ran towards the open steel door, shouting that Subject 1 had escaped. There were orders to catch him. The main character, surrounded by red tentacles, grinned. He rushed forward with a wide smile. 
The order was given to shoot and stop him, and the guards took up arms. Lu Jia dodged the shots by jumping on the walls. Soon he found himself among the guards. He hit one of the guards sharply with a red tentacle. As he landed, he knocked the weapon out of the other guard's hands. The main character hit the guard with a tentacle against the wall. Someone asked Mimir what they should do now. Mimir calmly told them to write it down. She said, Sample 1, the extreme meaning of evil is unknown. Based on behavior, it can be assumed that when a certain threshold of extreme evil is exceeded, disturbances in the logical thinking and cognitive judgments of the organism occur. The main character smiled and said that he had finally found the strength to protect himself. Turning to the tentacle, he asked if he could pull the thing back. Smiling, he said that if he behaved well, he would let him out, otherwise he would live in him. The tentacles immediately disappeared into his back. A huge red fish rushed to attack. Zhu Peng grabbed the fin with her hand. Taking advantage of the momentum, she flew into the air. She landed on the fish's back. Pointing at it with a gun, Zhu Peng said that it was too troublesome and she should spend some resources and finish it off. There was a note on the fish's back, surprise. Say that Nin Feng is the most beautiful. Zhu Peng said in bewilderment, Nin Feng is the most beautiful. The voice announced that the password was correct, and a projector appeared from the ceiling. The voice said it was his modified earth projector. He told her to keep her hand on it while using it and thanked her for her cooperation. After going down to the floor, Zhu Peng said, shameless. The fish turned sharply in her direction. Zhu Peng with a gun flashed in front of the earth projection. The fish bulged its red eyes. It immediately rushed to attack the round projection. The fish made a hole in the wall with its jump. The voice said that the task was completed, and he caught a note of contempt in her voice while entering the password. He said that he hoped that next time this would not happen again and that her tone would be more confident. The mount holding the projector has broken. Catching the projector with his hand, Zhu Peng asked him to try to avoid additional comments next time. She said it looks like this thing is quite expensive. Nin Feng annoyedly asked why she took his automatic modified projector and who the hell he was. Rubbing his chin, he said that it didn't matter. Her strength was quite strong anyway, so there was nothing to worry about. Looking at Jin Dali, he asked why a weakling like him was sent here when he couldn't even handle the monster. He added that, fortunately, thanks to him, even trash like him can get through. He asked him through the speaker if he needed help. Jin Dali shouted yes with tears in his eyes. Something like a pill fell from the ceiling. The object fell next to the black monster. There was an explosion shrouded in electricity. Item, stun grenade, green item, properties, one-time use item. A grenade made from various concentrated paralyzing drugs. Paralyzes the target for 10 seconds. Only works on creatures below strong level. Note, if you try to use this item during any risky maneuvers, you will be punished at the extreme evil level. The monster roared, shrouded in electricity. Nin Feng said, the task is completed, and he has 10 seconds to kill him. He asked why set a parallel trap. Jin Dali jumped to the floor. Straightening up, he pursed his lips and took the dagger in his hand. He slowly approached the monster, who bared his teeth. Once upon a time, someone found an abandoned black kitten and said that it was very dirty. People threw small stones at the kitten. The guy grabbed the kitten by the tail, laughing and asked his friend if he thought he could beat it to death. The kitten squinted angrily, blue eyes sparkling. Experiment, sample 57, since being taken into custody, has shown greater hostility towards people and has a need to consume human flesh and blood, which is likely due to life experiences prior to being taken into custody. A small black kitten stood among people lying on the floor, covered with scratches. Record of the experiment. According to the results of the experiment, it is assumed that its potential is much higher, but due to the low indicator of evil, funding for further research was stopped. Jin Dali stood in front of a huge black lion. Exhaling, he said that he had finally calmed down. Red blood sprayed. Blood dripped onto the floor. The monster looked at the pool of blood, and Jin Dali asked what he was thinking about. Blood was flowing from his palm and he said that he thought that his gaze was like that of a kitten outside the shelter, and he did not know what had become of him. He told the monster to open his mouth and drip the blood onto his tongue. Jin Dolly's HP dropped to half, and he smiled and told him to stop, because he would die if he continued to eat so much. The monster was licking blood from the floor. The system reported that the task was completed and the cat was calmed down. Turning around, Jin Dolly said that the job was done, and now it was time to leave here. Hearing a roar, he turned around. The monster jumped at him, sharp claws flashing. Jin Dali scaredly told him to leave him alone. The monster began to glow with a bright blue light. Turning into a black kitten, he sat on his shoulder and meowed. Jin Dali asked if he wanted to go with him. 
The kitten meowed affirmatively, walking further down the corridor. Jin Dolly said that he would be his dad or even grandfather. He asked why he looked so much like that cat from the shelter. The guards opened fire on someone with their guns. A gray-haired man with a beard, dressed in a white suit with glasses, laughed, ignoring the bullets hitting him. He immediately disappeared before their eyes. Grabbing one of the guards by the shoulders, the man said that today was Thursday. On the blue screen was an image of an eyeball. The man smiled and asked if his 50 eyeballs were okay. The guard's armor crumbled in his hands, and he fearfully demanded to be let go. The man said, apparently not. He pierced the guard's head with his hand. Holding two eyeballs in his hand, she said that he was missing 48 pieces. The guards turned around and began to retreat. One of the guards touched the device near the door. Another guard, with his head in his hands, asked who it was just now and why they couldn't just kill him. The third guard said, Sample 19, a crazy old man who was originally kept in a top-secret vault. Cursing, he said that today was Thursday. The man, laughing, said that they had not seen each other for a long time, and it was time for him to shake off the old days, especially since the situation allowed. Sample 19, crazy old man, extreme evil value, 840, danger level, strong, upper, conditions of containment, the crazy old man must be kept in a sealed room without any calendars, clocks or other means of measuring time. Make sure that there is no way for it to calculate the current date. Thursday, December 22nd. Precautions. The crazy old man appears to be kind at first glance and is not dangerous under normal circumstances. But once he sees the time associated with the number 4, for example, Thursday, April, the 4th day, 4 o'clock and so on, the old man will become extremely excited and persistently asked for 50 random environmental items. Without receiving them, he will kill the target, leaving practically nothing left of him. Note, if anyone says Thursday again, feed the fool to the old man. The security guard asked about the top secret vault. He said that only the director and those above can open it. Another guard grabbed his head and said that this meant they had been abandoned. A noise was heard in the corridor. The guard, falling to his knees, said that they would all die, and the disaster society disowned them. Someone told them to get up and take their weapons. Standing in front of them was a muscular man with a serious expression, Captain Ju. Ju told them to get out of here while he distracted item 19. Noticing the item in his hand, the guard asked if it was a decomposition emulsion. Another guard exclaimed that he would die. Ju, injecting the emulsion into his neck, told them not to talk and to save themselves. He attached the pass to the device. With his back to them, he said that, as their captain, he had to do this. The corridor was filled with the corpses of guards and scientists. There was a guard lying against the wall with a hole in his stomach. The main character said that it seems that many monsters have broken free. Noticing something, he sharply looked to the side. An elderly scientist with a bald head was lying against the wall. Noticing Lu Jia approaching, he began to sweat nervously. Lu Jia, laughing, said that he was very hungry, and the unfinished people were his favorite. The scientist begged him to let him go because he did not want to die. With his foot against the wall, the protagonist asked if he thought it wouldn't happen because he didn't want it. He said that he really didn't want to be hungry. The scientist, covering his face with his hands, said that he was in charge of research here, and he would help him get out. Leaning towards him, Lu Jia told him to remember that he should speak right away if he has useful information. Grabbing him by the neck with a tentacle, he told him to tell him everything he knew about research and association. The scientist agreed. He said that the Disaster Association is a huge organization whose purpose is to search for the truth. No one knows where its headquarters are located and what is known is that their influence extends to absolutely everything. The branch under the leadership of Dr. Mimir faces a very important research task. Find out the essence of extreme evil. The scientists said that for this study, they are constantly capturing creatures from different places to study the relationship between the indicator of extreme evil and them. However, after the first wave of research, they discovered that it was useless to expect stable results if the creature's evil indicator was not high enough. The bald scientist, standing next to the corpse of the red monster, said that if it was just a strong level, it was useless to conduct research. Another scientist said that they need stronger creatures. L.D. Nackle, for example. Even the association does not want to provoke creatures of a cruel level in vain. But recently they finally had an opportunity. They learned that a battle had broken out between creatures of a ferocious level in one place. The battle site was completely destroyed and the creature was severely wounded. The scientist said that on his orders the creature was captured, and this required significant financial costs. Dr. Mimir even decided to appoint him as the project manager. The scientist, gritting his teeth, said that the result should have come yesterday. 
However, Mimir then said that she had found a sample with a high level of evil, so she led the team herself and invested all her resources into this project. No matter how much he objected, she did not pay any attention to his words. Standing behind the protagonist, the scientist irritably said that she was simply jealous of him and his research, and he would conduct the research again and kick her out. He asked where she got a creature with an evil rating higher than ferocious, because this is impossible. Lu Zha said with a smile that he understood. The scientist said with a desperate smile that even though she had blocked the main path, he knew the secret one, and if he helped him get to the cleft lip, he would show him that route. The main character asked if he had an idea on how to subjugate this creature to himself. The scientist, grinning, said yes because, after all, he personally developed this plan. Lu Zha agreed with a grin and told him to lead the way. Approaching the glass, the scientist said that the cleft lip was directly ahead, but he would not be able to go there. Looking at the man sitting on the floor, he said that this madman had found the elixir of decomposition and had completely lost his head. Lu Zha asked if this form belonged to one of his people. The man turned around and his face turned into the face of a monster. The scientist told him to look at what he did to himself to save a couple of useless subordinates. The monster angrily rushed to attack. He hit the glass hard. He then hit the glass with his head. The main character asked if he just said that he was trying to protect his people. The scientist said that they are low-level guards whose lives are worthless. He said they were just pawns and cannon fodder. He said that if they did not pay them for their work, it is unlikely that anything would change in their lives. Smiling awkwardly, he asked if he could handle it. The monster hit the glass with its head again. Lu Zha, placing his hand on the scientist's shoulder, told him to open the doors. The glass rose up. The monster said, take into custody, danger. He jumped into the attack, and the scientist began to run away. The main character jumped onto the ceiling with the help of tentacles, dodging his attack. The monster turned around sharply. The shot hit him in the head. Zhu Peng, holding a gun, asked with a smile if he needed help. The scientist said that they are dangerous people and you need to stay away from them. Looking down, he said that, fortunately, there shouldn't be anything too dangerous here. Jin Dali apologized and said with a smile that he was too weak to fight, so he would hide here. The kitten on his shoulder meowed ominously. The scientist exclaimed in fear that this was Object 597. Zhu Peng used a tricyclic spell, Fireball. The shot rushed towards the monster. The flames enveloped him, and Zhu Peng raised her gun up. The monster jumped out of the stream of flames. Zhu Peng gritted her teeth and said that this guy is strong. Red tentacles wrapped around her waist. The main character pulled her towards him, and the monster's attack missed. Zhu Peng asked what this thing was. Lu Zha told her not to ask. He said it was a fetter. The monster turned in their direction. Zhu Peng frowned and said that this thing is quite strong and he will leave marks on it. The main character asked if she didn't have skills with increased damage. Zhu Peng said yes, but it is not easy to hit. Lu Zha lifted her into the air with his tentacles and told her to go. She exclaimed in amazement. He threw her forward, and Zhu Peng swore at him with obscenities that were automatically blocked by the system. The monster grabbed her throat with his hand. Opening his mouth, he wrapped himself with his other hand. The main character jumped into the attack, grabbing the huge scissors with his tentacles. He hit the monster's leg with the scissors, and Zhu Peng broke free of his grip. Pulling the pin from the grenade, she said, now. She shoved the grenade into the monster's mouth. Lu Zha covered his mouth with tentacles. An explosion occurred in the monster's body. He opened his mouth, from which came black smoke. He fell to his knees. Zhu Peng said displeasedly that he had gone too far. The main character with a smile said to consider this as a response to the shot with which she was going to kill him, and now they are even. Tilting her head, Zhu Peng asked with a smile if he knew about everything. Lu Zha said no. Pushing the monster with his foot, he asked if it was alive. The monster, turning to him, asked to listen to him. Copying the disaster dungeon, five minutes before start. The dialogue boxes say, please note that the traveler will enter the test space in five minutes. Objective of the mission, to ensure the stable operation of the research and prevent the four travelers from escaping from the disaster association. Reward, extreme value, 2000 points. Please note that information regarding the advanced difficulty level will not be disclosed under any circumstances. Violators will be punished. Special cases will be subject to immediate destruction. The guard said that the travelers would arrive again. Another guard said he didn't know who it would be this time. The captain asked what they were doing here. He told them to prepare for the test. The guard said there was no point in preparation. Another guard said it was almost impossible to survive anyway. The captain smiled and asked what they should do to survive. The guards looked at each other. The guard said that he wants to get out of here, and if Mimir's words are true, then they will not be able to get out of here. 
The guard behind the captain said that he wanted to go outside. Another guard said that he wanted to confess to the girl he was in love with, because before he had never had the time to do so. Someone else said that he would like to see the world through the eyes of travelers. Hugging them, the captain said with a smile that he, like them, also has something he wants to do, so he promises to save their lives. He said that after Dr. Mimir succeeds in his research, he will write a letter to the management asking for a long leave. The guards cheered. The captain said that the elixir of decomposition drove him crazy, and thanks to it he woke up, but he would not live long. The main character told him to say what he wanted. The captain asked, if possible, to let them go, because they do not want to be at enmity with him. They are just all under the control of noise. The red dialogue box says, it is forbidden to disclose important information about an extremely evil game. Repeated disclosure of relevant information to a traveler will result in your destruction. The captain's eyes widened, cursing. He shouted that he was already dead, and he was not afraid of him. Lu Zha grabbed his hands and covered his mouth with tentacles. Zhu Peng asked what he was doing. Lu Zha said that this is anti-theft equipment. He said to help him with something. He put the captain in the corner, raising his index finger. He said, firstly, more than anything in the world, he hates psychological pressure, and if someone interferes, he will not be able to endure it for long. He asked, secondly, didn't his mother teach him how to behave when he asks for something? Its tentacles released the captain's mouth, placing his armor and possessions on the floor in front of him. He said that this was all he had. The main character said that this was not bad. He told him to continue. The captain asked if he would fulfill his request. Lu Zha said no. The captain raised his head in anger. The main character threw something on the floor to him. Picking up the object, the captain asked what it was. Medicine, panacea, artifact, blue, defect, purple quality item from a pharmaceutical company. It can eliminate most diseases, including poisoning, curses and other negative conditions. Unlike the original version, this drug has occasional side effects when used. Note, they say that some men turned into girls after taking this drug. The company officially declares that these are all dirty tricks of competitors. Lu Zha told the captain if he wanted to save them, he should do it himself. The captain asked why he was helping him. The main character said that this is a regular deal and he wants to find out what their mission is. The captain frowned questioningly. Lu Zha asked what task the system gave them. He told him to say as much as he could without triggering the destruction mechanism, and that was the price of the deal. The captain said that he understood him. He told him to listen carefully. A huge black lion loomed over the scientist, who, clutching his head, called for help, saying that he was not a bad person at all. Jin Dali asked Zhu Peng if she had encountered something like this before. Zhu Peng said that this is an abnormal thing. Jin Dali asked in amazement, abnormal. The main character said to move on. Raising his head, he said that he had a new idea. An elderly man wearing glasses was lying on the floor. He slowly stood up. Shaking off the dust from his suit, he said, Peace and light, not only pain and murder. Walking along the corridor, he laughed slightly and said, But also worldly wisdom. Standing in front of the huge steel door, the scientist said that here was Object 3, the cleft lip. Smirking, he said that if not for his serious injuries, they would not have been able to contain him. The main character asked that the creature was still quite dangerous. The scientist said yes, because she is his best result. He told him to see for himself. Two people were visible in the huge room. A girl with dark hair, wearing a white shirt, was sitting on the table. Sticking her toe into the guard's mouth, she asked if it hurt. She kicked him sharply in the face. Raising her head, she said, it hurts. The scientist said it was great and he injected her with the 2000cc decomposition elixir, but no mutations occurred. Gritting his teeth, he said that, with the exception of a slight unconsciousness, all other indicators were normal and consistent with the experimental conditions. He asked why she didn't comply. Putting his hand on his shoulder, Lu Zha said that he would give vent to his emotions a little later. He asked how he planned to regain control over her. The scientist apologized and said that he was worried. Pointing his finger at her, he said, as simple as shelling pears. He said that she ran away when the control settings were asleep, and he needed to set everything up the way it was before, and the job would be done. Pointing his finger at him, Jin Dali exclaimed that he must be joking and he was sending them to certain death. Scratching his head, the scientist told them not to worry, because he had equipment that would help them. And besides, there was no other way anyway. He asked if they wanted to get out. The main character agreed and told Zhu Peng that she would stay and look after him. Jin Dali asked what about him. Lu Zha turned around and asked if he had ever heard the saying about a father and son who would move mountains together. 
Grabbing him by the collar, he dragged him along with him, and Jin Dolly shouted that he did not want this. Pointing the gun at the scientist, Zhu Peng told him not to even try to do anything. The scientist smiled and told her not to worry. He said that he was at one with them, and he also wanted to get out of here as quickly as possible. The main character and Jin Dolly walked through the large steel door. The girl sat in the center of the room in front of them. Jin Dolly asked what they would do. Lu Jia grabbed him with his tentacles and said that he was going there. He threw it tentacles forward. Jin Dolly fell to the floor in front of the girl. He noticed that she was down on the floor. She stood with a blank expression on her face. Calling her Miss Delicate Scarlet Lips, Lu Jia asked how she was doing. Recognizing him, the girl frowned. Opening her mouth, she suddenly rushed to attack. The main character activated the main evil skill with a grin. A white magic circle appeared under his feet. The dialogue boxes say, search in progress. Find a creature that favors you and is willing to become your minion. A girl with dark hair appeared from his chest and blocked the attack with her sword. The system reported that the call was successful. The girl, frowning, asked why the first person she sees is some kind of crazy woman. Turning around, she asked if he had called her. Summon minion, nightmare butcher, cut version. Note, the summoned object is a projection of the main body. The memory is not synchronized with the main body, and the strength and appearance will change depending on the strength of the summoner. The main character exclaimed in shock. Stretching her hands, the Nightmare Butcher told him not to worry because she would protect him. Lu Jia told her to be careful because she is quite strong. She said she couldn't beat her. The monster girl knocked her aside with a single slap. She smashed her head through the wall, and the main character asked if she was alive. Grabbing her head with her hand, the girl displeasedly asked what her level was. The monster girl jumped into the attack, raising her hand. The main character said that she had the same level as her. The girl blocked her attack with her sword. Small fragments broke off from the sword. She shouted that she couldn't win because he wasn't strong enough and he was weakening her. Lu Jia swung the huge scissors and they bounced to the sides. He told her to just help stall for time. The girl, wiping her face, said that then she would not be afraid of her. Jin Dali, looking at the screen, asked if it was the controller. The scientist said yes, and he needs to press the red button. An object appeared in Jin Dali's hand. The scientist asked what he was doing there, because he needed to hurry. Jin Dali asked with a smile, isn't it clear? He said he was planting a bomb. The scientist exclaimed in shock, and Jin Dali pressed the button. The bomb began counting down 30 seconds. He said now to give the key to the top exit to the beauty next to him. He said with a smile that otherwise his toy would explode. The scientist, gritting his teeth, said that this was pointless because it could not be destroyed so easily. Jin Dolly asked with a grin if he wanted to see information about this thing. The scientist asked in amazement what he was talking about. Item information, hazard warning. Quantum bomb, consumable, purple. Effect, when activated, this thing destroys absolutely everything. Don't ask me, high tech. The scientist asked in shock where he got such an object. Zhu Peng, pointing the gun at the back of his head, told him to think, because they are time travelers, and if they die, it doesn't matter, but not this sample, which they caught with such difficulty. Turning around, the scientist said that they had calculated everything long ago. The main character raised the scissors. The monster girl smashed the sword with a blow of her hand. She charged towards Lu Jia. There are three seconds left on the timer. The scientist took out an access card. Jin Dali, pressing the red button, thanked for his cooperation. The monster girl's eyes snapped open, stopping. Falling to her knees, she grabbed her head. Soon she fell to the floor. The main character asked the nightmare butcher if she was okay. Smiling, she said, of course. With her hands on her hips, she said that she had a fatal injury, and they must have a good relationship if he was able to call her. Waving her hand, she said with a smile that she was glad to help him. She said goodbye. Lu Jia smiled and said that she was really quite interesting. Crouching and clasping his hands behind his head, the scientist said that he would give them everything they needed. Zhu Peng told him not to be nervous and first tell him how to use this thing. The scientist said that with this pass they would be able to open the entrance to the upper floors. Zhu Peng, holding the access card to the screen, asked, like this. The dialog box says level a clearance check passed. Emergency exit open. Zhu Peng said that this seems to be true. The scientist said that this is natural, because it is real. He said with a smile that without it he would not have been able to give them a surprise. A transparent cylinder surrounded Zhu Peng. She kicked the glass. The dialogue box says, face not recognized. The system makes a decision about enemy penetration. Emergency mode is activated. Zhu Peng asked about the artificial intelligence here. The scientist, adjusting his lab coat, said that, fortunately, his skills were still superior to theirs. 
but he had to admit that they managed to surprise him. Addressing Lu Jia as Site 1, he said that he was the person in charge of Site 3 and the main supervisor of this disaster association base. The main character said that he already knows who he is. The scientist, laughing evilly, asked if he thought he just knew him. He said that he had been planning this moment since their first meeting. The kitten roared and turned into a huge lion. He hit the steel door hard. The scientist told him that it would be impossible to break through the defenses here. He asked the main character if he had any idea how much effort he put into this base. He said that every step, the development of every plan, the writing of every report and every program was done by himself, collecting this place literally bit by bit, and no one knows it better than he. Zhu Peng said that this thing is too dense and she does not have the resources to destroy it. Noticing something, she raised her eyebrows. The scientist irritably said that he ruined everything. Because of him an order came from above, and his experiment was suspended. He asked why, placing his palm on the screen. He said that's why he wanted to solve the question that interested that woman by comparing him and Object 3. The girl suddenly opened her eyes. She slowly rose to her feet and the scientist said that he wanted to know which project was better. Jin Dolly, hiding behind the black lions, exclaimed in fear that she was getting up. He asked if he could fight her. Lu Jia asked with a smile if he could. The scientist said that he was sorry that she was red hot. He told him to just imagine the power she would have if she were perfect. He ordered her to kill them. Looking at the piece of paper, Jin Dolly asked if he should leave right now, because who would want to face such a monster face to face? Looking at the black lion, he said that if he left, he would abandon him. Running up to the main character, he shouted that he would fight. Lu Jia said that he said that he doesn't want to fight, but he doesn't say that he won't do it. A girl's hand appeared above his hand. Kuchisake Anna, purple, material, killer level body part, has great strength, extremely valuable material. The main character said with a grin, if he so wants to see her perfect, then so be it. The scientist widened his eyes in amazement. Lu Jia threw the girl's hand forward. The girl opened her eyes in amazement. Her hand, shrouded in purple light, began to grow to her. She looked at her newfound palm. The girl said something in amazement. Streams of blue energy enveloped her. There was a warning on the red dialogue box. The mark was approaching a critical value. Retention measures are almost exhausted. Please fix this as soon as possible. The scientist asked what was happening. He said that the cleft lips threshold for evil had increased to the limit. Zhu Peng called out to him, and he turned around and said irritably that he didn't have time. Holding the projector in his hand, Zhu Peng told him to look here. The scientist's eyes widened in shock. Zhu Peng directed a projection of the planet Earth at him. The red fish, appearing scattering stone fragments, slammed its jaws around him. A red dialogue box indicated that the hold procedure had failed. The fish dived into the corridor floor and Zhu Peng began to run away. Coughing, the scientist asked what was happening here. He saw the silhouette of a woman in a cloud of dust. Object 3 stood right in front of him. The scientist exclaimed, smiling nervously. The girl's hand instantly pierced his chest. The scientist, coughing, looked in amazement at the hole in his chest. Machine guns flashed on the ceiling. The red dialogue box showed a warning. Level of personnel have been mortally wounded. The system will activate self-defense mode. The machine guns began to fire. There was an explosion behind the girl. With a flick of her hair, she broke the machine guns. The machine guns, shrouded in electricity, fell to the floor. Zhu Peng asked if this was ferocious level power. Jin Dolly said that he is glad that he runs fast. Noticing Zhu Peng, he asked when she had left. She told him not to mention it because she had fallen into a trap and it was a shame. The scientist, smiling, said that it turns out that she is ideal, and, as expected, the most suitable. Laughing, he said that he was right, and his object is the strongest. The girl waved her hand and blood gushed from his shoulder. Losing consciousness, the scientist continued to say that he was right. Pointing his finger at her, he said that she was truly perfect. He fell to the floor. The main character, clicking his tongue, said that he was sorry that funding for the project was stopped. The girl turned around sharply. Jin Dolly and Zhu Peng shouted to him to be careful. Stopping, they exclaimed in shock. The girl, clinging to Lu Jia, touched his face with her hand and said that they had met again. The main character said that they had not seen each other for a long time. The girl, cupping her face in her hands, asked if he came here specifically to surprise her. Scratching his head, Lu Jia said that he was just stopping by. The girl said she understands. Zhu Peng asked what was wrong with them. Jin Dali asked if they were old friends. Hugging the girl, the main character said that he needed to talk to someone. He asked if she would go with him. She agreed with a smile. Smiling widely, Lu Jia offered to finally meet with their long-awaited Dr. Mimir.